officially on here. I don't know if we're on just yet, but I hate this lighting. I'm using Restream, which is what we do every week for this, but I don't know what it is this week, but the lighting is just so off and I can't do anything about it. So I do apologize, guys, um, but, you know, we're going to have a good time. Anyway, we're going to have a good time anyway, regardless whether the lighting's good or the lighting's bad. We're here for some footy action, rugby league action. We're going to get chatting away. Hey, guys, how you going for today on Big House Sport? We're here in the Sheds. In the Sheds, episode number four, I think we are right now. Obviously, we've just had round two of the NRL season. And uh, look, it's been a really, really interesting first two rounds. And I know that, it, you know, that sounds like it's an obvious thing to say, but... You know, it has been super interesting because we've seen crazy results. We've seen the Knights on top of the table when he's hit print them for the bottom four. Um, you know, we've seen a whole heap of surprise results. It's just been a crazy couple of days, a uh, couple of rounds, sorry. And I'm super looking forward to how this season does obviously pan out in the end. Um, but yeah, we've also seen a big signing here today with Jermaine Sarko going from the uh, Broncos to the Eels. No, the Broncos to the Titans. Yes, everyone did say that he was going to the Eels, and I thought he was going to the Eels, but uh, apparently not. Apparently, uh, apparently no. Apparently, he's actually gone to the Gold Coast Titans, which is an interesting turn of events because we'll get into it later. We'll get into why it's a little bit of an interesting turn of events a little bit later on. But man, it's just uh, it's going to be an exciting one here to uh, to talk to you guys here today for the next hour, hour and a half or so that we usually go for. Your comments are going to come from this stream here. I'm going to respond to you guys the whole time through. We're going to go through every every uh, game that just went over the weekend, plus also the games that are going to be coming up this weekend, um, and the women's games, because there was a huge upset there with the Titans, but the Broncos as well for the Broncos' second ever loss in their entire history. Um, but yeah, obviously hit that thumbs up button, guys. Subscribe if you're new around here. We're super duper close to uh, 15.4K. Uh, so let's see if we can hit that by the end of this stream. But uh, okay, let's get going on here. So let's go and have a look at what happened over the weekend before we get into... Uh, what will be upcoming. I'm not going to be giving you my tips, obviously, because you guys know that if you're a $5 member, you get my tips. Uh, it's just me giving back to you guys. Obviously, there's so much content on the channel regardless that I do the tipping for the uh, members only, which is in the pinned comment there. So that'll come out tomorrow for you guys over there in the members. I got six from eight last week. Did pretty all right, but most of you guys should have done pretty all right in tipping last week. Uh, but <coughs> okay, so in round two, obviously, the Storm beat the Rabbitohs 15 of 14 in the first game on Thursday night there. Super close game. A really great game. We watched that one. Obviously, Puppy uh, hit the field goal in the end. But the last three, four minutes of that game was absolutely wild. You guys know we do live streams on the channel. We react to the games live. And uh, that was just a crazy end of a turn of events in that game where it was just end-to-end. -end, you know, how, how the Rabbitohs, after scoring those tries with the mother stop sin bin, how the Rabbitohs come back. And then for them to let the ball go out dead with a minute to go, off the drop, uh, off the kick from halfway. Like, what are they doing? What, what you doing, man? What you thinking, man? What you thinking, man? Shit, man. So, you know, then they had to drop it out and they get the ball because it bounces from one meter out, goes to the 10, they get it, and they go up and they're to kick a two-point field goal with Trump Mitchell. What you thinking, man? Like, gee whiz, that was wild. And then, obviously, Puppy hits the field goal in extra time, uh, which was absolutely crazy. Then we go to Friday, obviously, the Dragons beat the Panthers 16 to 20. Oh, sorry, gee whiz, they can't beat the Panthers 16 to 20. I was going to give you the actual, actual score. They didn't win. Uh, the Panthers won 20 16, that one at Net Strata Jubilee Stadium. Yeah, this was a um, bit of an interesting game, to be fair. The Dragons did all right. You know, they weren't too bad there. Panthers did, uh, you know, gave, gave it a really good crack without Cleary. And the Sutherland didn't obviously get to experience what he did in round one. Um, but, you know, with that being said, the Dragons, you know, they do look like a bit of a sneaky team this year. They do need to be consistent with it, though, because the Dragons have this knack of being good at the start of the season and then going pfft, right on downhill straight away. Boom, boom, gone, So be careful with the Dragons. Don't get hyped. Don't, don't, don't start hyping up just yet. Obviously, they got a win against the Warriors last week, but you know, that's the Warriors, and they lost the Panthers. But we'll see, obviously, who they're playing next week uh, to really get a feel of them. But we're still you know, two rounds in, man. We're going to wait until round five, six. I wait until round seven, to be fair. Uh, Roosters are manly. Obviously, Roosters won 26 to 12 in the end there. I don't know why people would tip manly. Manly don't have a good record against these good teams. And the Roosters were obviously going to be bouncing back from that horrific loss of the Knights in week one. Uh, they did do that. They won 26 to 12. And realistically, the scoreline should actually be bigger than what it represents there. But it is what it is. You know, manly, uh, Oh, the show with early days, but I guarantee there's going to be a lot of comments from you guys throughout the stream that are going to tell us uh, that you guys are going to be thinking that Manly are done when they are not done yet. You cannot be wiping Manly out just yet. It is way too early for that. Uh, they played the two, but one, two of the best teams in the competition, you know, so relax. They've got a bit of an easy task this week with the Bulldogs. Titans, obviously, with the Warriors at 20 to 18. Close game there, super hot conditions, slow up the track, made it really difficult to score, which obviously isn't what the Titans want or what the Warriors want, to be completely honest with you. Um, so, yeah, lots to, uh, lots to talk about and discuss with that game. But obviously, the Titans get the win there. We'll take two points. Uh, Sharks, 18 Oh, by the way, Warriors fans, hearing you complain about referees. Let's talk about that second try for you guys. Yeah, that was four pass. I can see it. I'm on the sideline. I can see it. I don't care what you buddy see on the TV. I can see it. I saw it live. If you're watching the vlog, 
you can see I get crazy. I get angry because I see the four pass. So shoot, please. Please, please do me a favor and shut your mouth. Okay, next one up here. Sharks uh, won 18 16 over the Eels. Uh, very close game there. Nico Hines kicking the penalty goal after the siren. Uh, not penalty goal, sorry. Converting it after the siren to win the game against the Eels. Looking forward to seeing what the Sharks can do this year. Uh, Cowboys, obviously. <laughs> Wow, uh, Cowboys followed the Raiders 26 to 6. I still have the Cowboys bottom four, but damn, Raiders, they are looking like a bottom 14 right now, too. Um, I don't know how to explain them. You know, Rick and Stewart's looking like his time's coming to an end there. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to wrap this game up because the Cowboys played pretty decently, but the Raiders played so poorly. It was ridiculous. Like, it was disgustingly bad how bad the Raiders played there. So, do be careful with how you go about from that game because you're going to want to tip the Cowboys. You're going to want to think the Cowboys are a really good team now, but. <laughs> Be, be very careful, man. <laughs> be very careful. Uh, then, obviously, on uh, Sunday, we also saw the Knights take down the Tigers 26 to 4. I originally tipped the Knights to win. Then, Cameron Pong was out. Then, David Clone was out. I then changed my tip to the Tigers. And uh, that is the worst mistake you can ever do in your life. Don't ever, ever, ever tip the Tigers. And that's exactly what I did do. I tipped the Tigers. So, you know, Muppet galore right here. Uh, but I'll pretend like on the members video that I got seven from eight because the members. They obviously still sort of the Knights. They didn't get to see the changing of the tips. So boom, take that one. You can't take that one away from me. But on my actual tips, kind of screwed me there, you West Tigers. You are uh, you are a schmozzle. You are a schmozzle. But the Knights are now top of the table. Congratulations. But their hype train is going to come down pretty soon. Don't you worry. Uh, and then obviously the Broncos and Bulldogs played in an unbelievable game there. Low scoring game. Brilliant game though. Bulldogs only had a chance to tie it up in the, on the siren. But Albert Kelly stopped the try. 16-10 to the Bronx. Um, you know, Bronx, there's, there's tough opposition coming. And both these teams... Had a lot of mistakes in this game. Jay Knockenball. Don't start me with Jay Knockenball, but damn, man. Um, there is a lot of people. I, I said this on my Instagram. Big ass for Instagram. If you're not actually, I'm going to put it up here on, on screen. I said this on my Instagram story. You know, people are going to look, not look at this game and realize there were so many mistakes from both these teams. And both these teams had a lot of things that they need to go right in the future. There's only two rounds in, so that's exactly what we're here for. You know, we're here to you know, trial it out, get those two points, hopefully. But the beginning part of the season is to really fix a few of those nitty-gritty stuff that obviously isn't looking the most fantastic for you. And that's exactly what uh, this game hopefully is for these two teams because although it was great and although it was close, both these teams from that game need a lot to go their way still. So just don't don't overrate that game based on the individual performances. Uh, rate the game based on the fact that it was exciting, it was fast-paced, and it was close, you know. Uh, but the Bulldogs also threw that game away, man. You know, you should have won that game. You should have won that game. But, uh, man, and Jaden Ockenboy, he's not a big fan of the Bulldogs. But it's time to get into the, uh, what you guys have to say. Let's get into the chat. So uh, I'm usually about 10, 15 minutes behind where the actual chat is because I respond to as many as I possibly can. So like I said, guys, thumbs up, subscribe, get around it. And uh, the first one here, yeah, yeah, the Titans. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's a lovely word. And he says he stole our Osaka, who's Paramount bound. You know what's funny about Trey Osaka is that he, I don't get his thought process here. I'm a Titans fan. I don't get his thought. I'm wearing a Titans hat. I don't get his thought process here. Why Why do? You, why did he choose to go to the Titans? Is he getting off of more than Paramount? Because he's going to get a starting spot at Paramount. But he's not going to get a starting spot. He's going to play reserves for the Titans. So why don't you just stay at the Bronx? But obviously, he would have just probably got more. I don't know what his contract is like. So he would have got more, but. Surely he would have got more because why would you leave otherwise? He's going to Redcliffe next year. It's a really confusing situation for me with Osako. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not too sure how to read this one greatly. I'm not too sure how to um, how, I'm not too sure how to read this one greatly, but it is good depth. It is really good depth, absolutely. Um, Jack's vlog says, uh, I'm so happy they're on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how long for though. Ryan Zagas says, Hey, big guy. And a jump on a Blake Carlos says, Let's hope the season. Keeps going how it's going so far. I love these close games that go down the last play. I've been telling you guys for, you know, since the preseason, uh, this is what it is like at the moment. You know, we are seeing um, in the NFL, you know, we're, um, we're, seeing in the, uh, we're seeing in the NFL, obviously it was crazy. The NBA obviously has been crazy too. I thought the Bulls today, baby. Oh, oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, who else has been crazy? Premier League is going to be really crazy. Obviously one game. Um, one one point of difference now. You know, AFL has been some crazy results. So look at Sunny's going, mate. Look at the goal go. Sunny's going in the AFL. Um, and the NRL, I'm telling you, it's one of those years. 2016 was that year where it was the year of the underdog. This year, it's just, it's going to be really good years overall. Like in the NFL, every single playoff game was decided by less than three points. Every single playoff game was decided by less than three points. Wild. Absolutely, just absolutely wild. Uh, Claire Gray Sinclair says, will Osaka play win the fullback or not make a team? He won't make a team. He's not going to play fullback. Jaden Campbell's going to be the fullback. He's not going to play in the halves because we're going to be definitely sticking with AJ Brimmer and Tommy Sexton. And the reason why Osaka has been signed is because we don't want 
if Jaden Campbell gets injured, we don't want to be chucking Brimmer out at the halves and putting him with the fullback. We need to be staying with those two halves there right now. So the reason, and, and on the wing, you know, we've got Philip Sammy there, we've got Greg Marzi there, but we've got Corey Thompson come back. Greg is actually our depth signing. Greg is actually our depth player there. Greg is going to be playing as a backup to Corey Thompson and Philip Sammy, we would safely assume, unless they got, try to go a different route. But we do need an experienced player like a Greg Mar- uh, like a uh, Corey Thompson there. So it's a tough one to read, man. It's a really, uh, it's a seriously tough one to, it's a seriously tough one to read because. I don't think he plays for us. I genuinely think he is just simply a. Um, I genuinely believe he's just simply a depth signing. So yeah, I don't think he makes a team, but it is great for the uh, great for the depth of the team. Uh, Tommy says Barrett the Ferret got to be sat by round six. I disagree. I don't. I believe so anymore. I, I I would go away from what you're saying there. And the reason being is that they showed enough in the first two rounds that I don't even think that if they get blown out by forty to fifty in every, which is not going to happen because of the way the game is now. But I don't think that even if they got blown out in these upcoming four games, before they play the Bronx again, I think the Dogs will beat the Bronx when they play them the next time they play. So, you know, they've got – what's their record again? Who have they got again? Let's go have a look here at the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs' next game is obviously Manly. They're going to get thumped. They're going to get absolutely thumped by Manly. Absolutely thumped. Anyone who doesn't know that, yeah, you should start knowing it. Get on Manly 13+. plus. Get on Manly 30+. plus. Get on Manly 40+. plus. Honestly, I would probably suggest it. Um, Storm versus the Bulldogs, uh, then Bulldogs Panthers, and then Rabbitohs Bulldogs. So the thing is, the Rabbitohs game isn't as hard as people were imagining before the season because Rabbitohs aren't that great. Rabbitohs probably still win, but Rabbitohs aren't that great anymore. Uh, could be more an interesting game than you think. And they play the Broncos again, and then they play the Roosters. So it's not even next, really the next four rounds. It's the next, you know, uh, six rounds still because then they play the Roosters. So um, yeah, I would I would say that no, he's not going to because he obviously won that first game. They needed to win that. They needed at least to win one game. They did. They won that first game against the Cows. Uh, second game against the Bronx was way more desperate for them to win, uh, but they couldn't get it. You know, they, they struggled to get the job done. And, uh, you know, the Bronx, they didn't need that win because they don't, they have a super soft schedule at the beginning of the season. Like, let's go have a look. Like, they had the Rabbitohs when, obviously, look at the Rabbitohs right now. They're the Dogs, Cowboys, Warriors, and then the big boys come, baby. <laughs> then the big boys come there, Broncos. Then you get smacked with the Roosters. Then you get slapped with the Panthers away. You get the Bulldogs again. Nice little uh, taste test there. And then you get slapped with some Sharks action. Maybe the Rebels might have figured their stuff out by then. Then Manly comes knocking doors. Titans come knocking doors. Oh, gee whiz. Broncos, you better lap up this next four weeks. Well, this next two weeks. You better be 4-0. and You better be a 4-0, Broncos, because otherwise you're going to be in a situation because you have a tough schedule after you play the Warriors in two weeks' time. Gee whiz. And that's more... Oh, it is in Red Cliff. I was going to say, uh, when are the Warriors going to go home? Uh, get, get them home, man. Get them home. But no, I disagree. I don't think Barrett's going to get sacked uh, in the first six rounds. He should, they showed enough. Uh, what position does Zach play for the Titans? He'll play wing, but he won't play in the team. He won't um, He won't get into the team, to be completely honest with you. Uh, Christian Kukovic says, hi. Hello, Christian Kukovic. Ty Stone says, puppy Pappenhausen. Uh, Sasha Kelson says, I don't like what Nathan Brown is doing to our club. I don't think he'll take us far. And I want him gone. Who you suggest we're the best person to take over our club if Brown gets sacked? This is the biggest question you must ask yourself when you want a coach sacked. Everyone's always like, oh, get rid of him. Move this guy out. Well, we do this shit out. Get him out of here. It's like, okay, but who's going to come in? Who is on the market? Shane Flanagan? He's probably the only one on the market right now because and, and are you sure that he's going to do the job? Like, are you sure that a team wouldn't have picked him up if, he, if they knew that he was going to be, you know, the saviour, the dragons would have done it? Um, I don't know who you take right now because there's just no one on the market. So you're going to give a completely inexperienced coach the reins at a club that's already struggling. They're going to get even worse, mate. They're going to get even worse. So... Um, I'd be, I'd be, um, yeah, I'd be very careful about suggesting a new coach for the Warriors because they would probably get the wooden spoon if you got the new coach because you can't be giving this team an experience right now with the fact that they're struggling to win games as it is. They're still away from home. Most of the boys, and this is something that people got to remember, most of the team right now is actually Australian. So them going back to New Zealand, they're going to lose a lot of those players, right? They're going to lose a lot of them next year. A lot of them are going to want to stay in Australia. They're not going to want to go to New Zealand. They're not going to want to live in New Zealand. It's just how it is, man. So as much as it may suck, Warriors fans, I would, uh, uh, you know, you can't be thinking about your coach right now because you're going to have some major player problems very, very soon. Major player problems very, very soon. Kim Johnson says, and it's not up to him. I just find it a little weird, that's all. Oh, it's not up to uh, What? It's not up to him. He was allowed to go. It absolutely is up to him. It is absolutely up to him that he was able to. Are you talking about Asako? Asako was the one in the show because he knew he wasn't going to get any playing time with the Broncos uh, because obviously they've got Selwyn Cubbo there, you've got Corey Oates there, and then the fullback, they've got Tessie New. 
Um, he would be another depth signing. He'd be another depth player, uh, which is exactly what he is at the Titans. So uh, it's, it's literally going... Because he's going to regular things he signed. So Eels were going to start him. They, were, they would have started Jermaine Sarko. And I like him as a winger. I think he's a good winger. I'm not taking over Greg Marcy or, or Philip Samuel or Corey Thompson, but I like Sarko as a winger. So, yeah, it's just an odd one for me. It really, it really is. And it took me off guard because I was like, why would he choose that? Like, why would why would you choose to go? Unless it was a big contract. I'm, I'm assuming that's the only reason. I'm assuming because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the Hunting NRL says Harry Grant got COVID. That sucks for the storm. It affects for him too. Yeah, absolutely. I hope he gets better. I hope he gets better. Uh, but yeah, it does impact, impact the storm quite significantly. Uh, George Burgess' recent incident. I have no idea what his recent incident is. I actually generally don't. If you, if you, I'm not trolling. I just generally don't know what it is. Uh, Member says, how the heck is Storm versus Rabbitohs voted the most, most best of the match of round 22? Because people look at the endings of games to determine how many, how good the games were. Right? People always look at the last five, ten minutes of a game, and then they're like, "Oh, that was an awesome game," or "Oh, that was a shit game." It's like this is the prime example. Broncos Cowboys Grand Final 2015. The first 65 minutes was not that great. It was really quite boring. But the last 15 minutes really took it up a notch. And then obviously we know what happened. Corey, uh, Corey was it Corey Oates? Sort of, no, so not Corey Oates. Carl Felt on that right hand side scored a try. And then and then obviously Ben Hunt dropped ball. And then the first one field goal. Cowboys went up for first one ever. Like that was an amazing moment, which made that game. But the first 65, 70 minutes of that game was really not great. So um, that's why when people say, what's the favorite grand final? I don't actually have, I think, I probably think it's probably still top three, but it's just the ending. The, the majority of the game wasn't great. But overall, it's exactly how it is. The majority of the Silver Rose game was terrible too. But in the end, it ended up being close. It ended up being, you know, fiery. So, uh, you know, that's what people are going to back in. That's what people are going to back in. Uh, Ryan Sarko says, I'm excited for the Storm game. Hopefully we come back from that heartbreak and loss against the Sharks. Uh, excited for the, oh, the Eels. Um, yeah, well, Harry Grant out is a big one for them. Grant's missed out too. So who goes into the nine? What, wish out? Who goes into that nine? I actually don't know who goes into the nine. Actually, I'll go have a look. I'll go look at the team list right now. Because uh, after this is when I'll film for the, um, after this is when I'll film uh, my members tipping video. I haven't even looked at the team lineups just yet. Who's coming in here to this nine? Uh, oh, they've still got Harry Grant there. Who would come into the nine? Maybe Tyrant Wishart, maybe? Shit. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. When I get to the chat soon, in probably, yeah, I'm 10 minutes behind, but when I get to that point, let me know who you think is going to be the number nine there for the Storm because they're in a bit of a situation right now with Brian Smith injured and also now uh, the big fella Harry Grant gone. Now, this is massive round two. Should either be Titans, Warriors, or Sharks, Eels. This is great. Titans, Warriors should not be a uh, uh, match of the round. There was a lot of mistakes for both teams in that game. Uh, the reason why I was impressed with the Titans is because usually we lose those games, but we've won that game against a team that has been classed as our bogey team in recent years. So, uh, no, match of the round should not be Titans Warriors. Sharks Eels, I can give you a shout. I'd probably say that Sharks Eels was better than Storm versus Rabbitohs, yeah, uh, but not Titans Warriors, no, absolutely not. Uh, Jay Hay says, uh, Cowboys over the Broncos. Uh, I'm not going to say it. I can't tell you. I can't tell you what my tip is. Uh, X Factor TCG says the Cowboys was the only tip I got wrong. I did not expect the Raiders to get like 50% completion rate. The heat in the final Queensland was too much for the cold Vikings. Uh, good be a shout because honestly, like I said, that wall, that Saturday was hot, man. Like that Saturday was hot. If you guys watched my Titans vlog, that shit was hot. So I would expect that North Queensland was like that or hotter to be fair. But obviously it was during the night, so not as hot as that game. Uh, but just maybe the humidity, because the humidity up that way is a lot hotter. So they might not be able to do it. And that's why I, I do worry with the Titans a little bit, because it will be such uh, different conditions. Uh, but with that being said, you know, we still should put a score past them uh, this week, to be completely honest with you. But the Raiders, yeah, they got flogged by the Cowboys, and that shouldn't be happening at any stage of any part of the season. Uh, Truck Down says, we're all called the Tigers fans. Uh, okay, mate, if you say so. Noah John says, hey, Blaze, hello, Noah. Um, and it says, I honestly thought the Knights as Tigers would be a much closer match. Boy, was I wrong. Um, yeah, I, I tipped the uh, I tipped the Knights first and then changed my tip to the Tigers. And even after Ponga got out, uh, even after Ponga was out and Clement was out, like I thought the Tigers were going to get it, but they didn't. Um, and I want to clarify for people who go out there and say, oh, imagine how much they would have won by Ponga and Clement were playing. That's not how rugby works. It's not how football works. It's not how sport works. It doesn't work like that. So um, it, it doesn't mean that you're just going to get extra points just because these players who play. You played fantastic. Just take the fantastic win. Shush. It doesn't mean that you get more points because this player played. The whole game changes. You could actually arguably lose the game. You could actually argue lose the game because the game is played in a completely different way. 
I don't think so <laughs> because the Tigers were that bad. But I'm just throwing that out there. You can't say that, oh, because these guys weren't there, we probably would have scored more. You sure should just enjoy the game. Um, throws alarm says, Ty Tenny Asaka's punch on is a punch to the Eels for round one. When do you think he can get a chance to play? Yeah, the Eels can suck a dick. That's exactly right. Um, but he probably won't, he won't, won't play for the Titans unless we get an injury. He won't play for the Titans unless we get an injury. Alex says, I'm giving Saka on the sentence. They go, good. Why? Why are you giving it? Uh, why are you taking out Patrick Herbert and Brian Kelly? Why? Why are we doing that? Why would you do that for a player that's only going to play for 24 more rounds? Because he's going to Redcliffe next year. He's signed, sealed, and delivered. Well, not delivered yet, but he's signed, sealed to Redcliffe. Why would you play him over our actual contract of players for multiple years and ruin the chemistry that these guys are trying to build as a team? That would make absolutely zero percent sense to me. This is why the Broncos, this is why Isaka left the Broncos. This is why it's so confusing because he left the Broncos because he wasn't going to get game time. He wasn't going to get that spot because of the fact the Broncos, yeah, he was going away, he was leaving. And now he's going to Titans who arguably have stronger players in those specific positions. It makes no sense. It makes it, it, it makes no sense. But I see Jeff signing, so I'll get around it. I'll get around it and, you know, I'll back him in. Uh, Fraser Lump says, Broncos, Bulldogs, Sunday was one of the better Broncos dogs games I've seen, especially since I went to the game. Uh, yeah, it was probably the best Broncos dogs game I've seen because the last time I watched the Broncos dogs, it made me want to throw my head against a brick wall. That was the worst game in history last year. Uh, Fraser Lump says, could the ladder be close, like 2018? Yeah, I, yeah, I say this all the time. Yeah, it will be. It will It will be close. Uh, Ryan Sarkle says, up the Dockers, one point win over the Crows. Yeah, they got a nice little sneaky. This is an NRL podcast. Uh, Snipper Scars is so glad the Hodgson has to get... Oh, so sad. Jeez. So sad. I was going to say, glad Hodgson has to get an ACL injury, a surgery? Yeah, it is very sad because he won't play for the Raiders again. Uh, yeah, it is very sad. It is, you know, it is incredibly sad to see that one. But, you know, that's the way the good crumples in our sport, man. You know, ACL injuries come in thick and fast and, and injuries come in thick and fast with the way that we have contact with each other. And obviously they're trying to implement many new rules to, to really improve the scrums as well, which will you know, bring more injuries. So, uh, you know, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Uh, Marcus Thumas says, who do you think will win? Roos Rabbitohs. I'm not going to tell you who my tip is because the tipping is for members only. I do that because obviously I put enough content out here every single day, so I'm not going to tell you who I'm going to be tipping in that game. But it will be a close game. I think it will be closer than you guys imagine, uh, but I definitely do know who I'm going to be tipping in that one. Um, X Factor says, uh, Greg honestly looks like he can't be tackled if you give him the ball time he's out with space. Yeah, absolutely. Greg Marcy is absolutely unbelievable to watch, man. And when he's attacking, he is a ridiculously skilled attacker. And obviously on the weekend, you can't go up against Pompey every single day, though. You know, you can't go up against Pompey every single week, so you're not going to get that much space. But overall, um, you know, Corey Thompson is the main guy there because Greg Marcy on defense needs to work on it significantly. You know, but the fact of the matter is as well, guys, the second half of both Titans games this year have not ended in a try for the opposition team. The Titans keep getting shut on for their defense, but it's just the first half. It's literally just the first half. To this point, 80 minutes gone in the second half. The Titans have not given up a single try, an arguable point, but then again, we go back to the Eels game. I don't want to get into that. But the Titans have not given up a single try in second halves this year. But, you know, you can keep shit on their defense, keep shit on it all the lot. But the second half is not something to be shut on. Fraser Lama says, I reckon the Titans could make a real statement versus Canberra. I don't care if it's in Canberra. Absolutely. Canberra is actually a 50 50 for the Titans. <coughs> it's, always, um, it's always very 50 50 with these two teams in Canberra. We don't have a bad record there. Um, there's nothing really. Uh, scary for me about going there. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely think the Titans off the, off the back of the, the win in tough conditions, gritty conditions, off the back of the fact that I was speaking to BK, obviously, after the game, we spoke about the fact that we believe we should be 2-0 and right now. Um, a lot of the boys think we should be 2-0. and I've never seen a player actually admit as wholeheartedly as BK did at, at, in the interview that we should be 2-0 and right now because that obviously is going against the referees without going against the referees, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I was, uh, I, I'm very confident in this team. Yeah, I'm very confident in, in what's, uh, what's going down behind closed doors in this team. And, uh, you know, I think we'll put a score on the this week, hopefully. Uh, Sam, what do you think is the better Storm? What, do you think, what team do you think is better, Storm or Panthers? Are you talking about long-term history or are you talking about right now? Are you talking about long-term history or are you talking about right now? Because if you're talking about right now, I'd probably lean with the Panthers because of the grand final winners. But if you're talking about long-term history, you're absolutely taking the Storm. Uh, for as long as I mean, you never know. It depends because Canterbury don't have a good record at Suncourt, but let's see how Brisbane go next few weeks based on Formula 1. You're progress fan. You're progress fan. Memeda says, I wonder what Dazmate's reaction is going to be when he finds out Trent might stay his coach a little longer. Mate, Dazmate's in love with buddy uh, Trent Bat. Dazmate is in love with that, man. And he, he just is. He just, buddy, he simply is. Jay Hayes says, a Broncos will get slapped by the Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys, the only, I'm telling you, I was about to say they don't slap anybody, but they just slap Raiders, so that should tell you everything you know, Canberra. Holy shit. 
Holy shit, Daronos. Fraser Lamb says uh, Broncos are capable of winning at least one or two of those games. Oh, oh here. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Broncos are capable of beating the Panthers and the Tooksters, are they? Oh, here we go, the Broncos fans. Uh, they win two games. They win two games at the beginning of the season against an absolutely deplorable Rabbitohs team and a Bulldogs team that's still rebuilding. And now apparently they're going to be beating the Panthers and the Roosters. Oh, my God, for us. Oh, stop it. Broncos fans, you are something. You are you are something special. You are you are you should be in a museum. You guys should truly be in a museum for how sometimes it, it, it just is something really incredible what you guys can say. Now they've won, they've gone two and zero against teams that look not that great. Bulldogs look okay. Rabbitohs don't look great at all. And now they're going to be winning against the Pennies and the Roosters. Oh shit! The last time this team went two and zero, mind you, they got the wooden spoon. Just remember that, Broncos fans. The last time you went two and zero. You got the wooden spoon. Buddy, just shush for one moment. Just relax until round five, six. Wait until you play a good team and then let's chat. Then let's chat. Wait till you play the Roosters in. When do you play the Roosters? Uh, I think round five, was it? Wait till you play the Roosters. You're at Suncorp Stadium too. You know, you give them a nice little home game there. Nice little cheeky. For, oh, Friday night. Fair. Of course it is. Of course it's a Friday night game uh, against the Roosters there. Um, you know, wait till that game. We'll come back and we'll talk about it. Actually, no, we'll come back after the pan- We've got the Roosters and then the Panthers. Roosters and then the Panthers. And you get the Bulldogs again, and they get the Sharkies. So that's going to be a nice little six-week stretch. I know the Titans are that one too. Then we can start talking, Broncos fans. Oh, damn. Oh, oh damn. Chad says round three tips. It's on the members only section, my guy. On the members only section. Jay Hayes says, if you want tips, you need to become a member. Bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing. Tell me right. Fraser Lamb says, currently 3 for 90, 391 for nine, the final test that no one cares about. <laughs> Yeah, no one cares about that test, man. No, unfortunately, it's just because of the pitch, man. It's just because of the pitch. Uh, Charles Kelly says, Broad Warriors can say in if they've won another prison team. We don't want them back. Uh, wow, that's an interesting comment. Um, and this is why your club will never be successful if you're going to be treating your team like this. My team has won two wooden spoons in the last 11 years. And look at how I am with my team on the weekend. You know, I flew back from Chicago to come watch. My team get the wooden spoon in 2019. And you're here complaining right now. You're here saying they can stay in Redcliffe, they can get out of New Zealand. Holy shit. You are a muppet. This is like that comment the other day on one of the streams where someone was like, oh, look at the Tigers fans. It's so good that they're staying around. It's so good that they're loyal. They're expected to say they're game. They're expected to stay. That active area, the um, the jungle, love it because they stayed there. But they're expected to stay there. There's no oh, well done. Well done. Well done. They stay at the end of the game. The whole man, they're meant to stay there at the end of the game. They're meant to be there for their team. This man, obviously, is not there for his team. Jeez, man. Jeez, I tell you what. Uh, Marcus Thuma says, I don't think Michael Maguire is the top of the Tigers, but the players are not good enough. That's cool, Marcus, but he's also been there for eight years. He's been, or how many years has he been there now? When did he come from the Rabbitohs, actually? When did Michael Maguire come from the Rabbitohs? I'm going to Google it. You guys are going to comment in the chat, but Michael Maguire, Tigers, let's go look at this. Let's go have a look at this. I know you guys can go in the chat, but I'm like 10 years behind it. Uh, it could have been actually 2018. No, 2018. Okay, forget me. So 2018. It's been there four years. He's had time to change things, and they look just, well, uh, I believe, well, it's the same. I wouldn't say anything's changed in the last four years. Besides Harry Grant going there, a fantastic hooker that changed their everything. Um, so you can argue it's only been four years, but the same sense you can also say it's been four years. It's a bit of a 50-50 with that, with that one, man, because Mike McGuire is riding on the successes of 2014, um, which had Greg Inglis in the team, which had Adam Reynolds in the team. You know, they had an unbelievable Sammy Burgess in the team. Like, they, they were a fantastic team back then. He's come to the Tigers. He's implemented nothing. And the only good thing that's come out of it is documentary of him swearing. Like, tell me that I'm wrong. What else have they done at the Tigers? You know, they've lost... When did Tedesco go to the Tooks? Was that 2017, maybe? That was just before him, maybe? Like, I don't know what we're meant to be doing here with, with Michael McGuire. What are we meant to be commending him for still... Uh, we're commending him for being loyal, like what you do with the fans for sticking around to game? Is that what we're meant to do? Is that what we're meant to do? Uh, Charles Cowley says, Bro, Rabbitohs' comeback was awesome. It was awesome, but the same sense, it was because the Melbourne Storm had a year of Cindy. So, you know, it was down to the ill discipline. Uh, Trevor Reese says Cowboys top eight. You are a Muppet. Blake Hart says, out of the past 10 years, where would you rate last year's grand final? Uh, 2016 is the best. 2016 is the best. I'd probably say, I love 2014, so I'll go 2014. So that's two. Uh, 2015 is there too. That's three. Uh, oh, I'd say last year was probably better than 2019. I'd probably put it four. 
I'd probably put a four, yeah. And the 2014 one is going to be kind of skipped over by most because of the fact that obviously the Rabbitohs won by a lot in the end, but it was very close up until the last few moments of that game when the Rabbitohs just went bang, 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 bang in the last 10 minutes. So I'd probably say four, but it's, it was still pretty fun to watch. It was still a really fun grand final to watch. Now, Jay says, if Dragons can win two out of the next five games and consider it a big plus, tough month ahead. Look, I'm looking forward to actually most to see how the Dragons go because they put in a shift against the Pennies. You know, they put in a decent little shift. Obviously, they beat the Warriors unconvincingly, but they still beat them. This is a big game for them on Thursday. And I'm still weighing up whether to do that or strength Australia this Japan game because that is a massive game for World Qualifying. I can tell you right now, if we don't win that game, we are goshy. We are goshy. We're going to have to go to Uruguay, buddy, somebody, no hope, uh, South America team who are going to use us as a bit of a, you know, training ground. Um, but obviously, Dragon Sharks this week, uh, that's going to be a real tough game for you guys. I, I, don't, I don't even know who to tip. I know who I'm going to tip, but it's, it's a tough one. Uh, and then the Dragons play the Eels as well. Yikes, Eels away. Ooh, that's going to be a tough one for you to sneak through. Then the Rabbitohs. Wow. And Rabbitohs aren't that great, but they can start. This is the thing, guys. They've still got the players. They've still got the players where they can fix this shit. It's only two rounds in. They have still got Damien Cook. They've still got Cody Walker. They've still got Latrell Mitchell. They've still got Campbell Graham. They've still got all these big bubbles. Come on, my tongue. Great players that can come together. I just don't know if Jason Demetrio has been able to have the same effect as Wayne Bennett, obviously. Because Wayne Bennett is Wayne Bennett. That's the, that's the problem. Uh, and then the Dragons, after that, play the Knights. The top of the double Knights. There you go. Get a bit of an easy one there. But overall, man, yeah, the next uh, next few weeks is going to be a really uh, eye-opener for the Dragons. They're really big eye-opener. Uh, Jack, attempts is Wishart, most likely. Yeah. So then who would come in for Wishart, then? Who comes into that bench? I'm going to have a look here. I'm going to have a look. It's, it's a tough one, too, because obviously... Oh, Brandon Smith's in, by the way. Brandon Smith is in. No, Brandon Smith's going to get the nod. Brandon Smith is into the uh, extended bench there on the reserves, unless... He's not ready yet, and they're just putting him there just in case. But he's there. He's in number 23 reserve. They may bring him in, to be fair, if he's ready to go. But then again, they might wait a week to get him back in too. I don't know. That'll be interesting, actually. Uh, Brian says, I think Jaden Nicarina will be playing at nine, maybe. I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. Uh, Ryan says, after like 300 overs as well, you guys are talking crew right now. Uh, Charles Kelly says, you think Marcy will not play next week? No, Marcy will play. Marcy should play Isako will not start for the Titans. So I will not start for the Titans. It will never happen. And if it does happen, I'll be superbly surprised. Because Isako is not better than Greg Marcy. Isako is not better than Philip Samuel. Isako is not better than Corey Thompson. And Isako is not better than Jaden Campbell. You could argue Jaden Campbell's getting, you know, the experience there. But if you want to take Jaden Campbell out for a game and throw in Jermaine Isako and test it out, like, cool, but you're going to ruin the confidence of, uh, of Jaden Campbell. So, you know, <laughs> got to be careful with those ones with the young blood. Friends of Arms, do we think Cowboys can continue their good form? Jake Patterson says, as a Bronx fan, I really love our four pack. Haas, Campbell, uh, Kate Well, Carrigan, and Ricky are going to be stars. Uh, I think Carrigan's are relatively overrated. I love Haas, though, obviously. Kate Wells is relatively overrated, but still does decently. And Jordan Ricky, I do love to see. So 50 50, man. 50 50. You know, people are going to come out here and say, oh, what are you talking about, man? Don't, don't believe it, right? Kate Wells, okay. And Carrigan's okay. And Ricky's young and okay. Haas is obviously the only star there right now. Uh, but there's still potential there for them. But I. Don't rate them overall as much as other people do. But then again, you're a Broncos fan. Of course, you're going to rate them. Uh, but Haas is definitely an absolute star already. Um, the best front row in the competition. Uh, a lot of Broncos fans here today. You guys have been disappearing for the last two, three years. So just surprised to see so many Broncos fans out about. Uh, Sam says, Asaka should probably play Q Cupper to the Titans need him. He will. We'll probably have the Bears or something like that. The Bears or, or maybe um, the Bears or maybe Tweed. Francis brought us the third time in four years, and he's 34, and this is a place for Marnie, for Para. Of course, no disrespect, disrespect for Josh himself, but yeah. Uh, uh, in regards to the ACL, yeah, look, it's a tough injury, man. That's what we have in this game, especially at the hooker role, because obviously you're moving and grooving so much there so frequently, you know, darting in and out, darting in and out. Um, it's, a, it's an injury that really does – it's significant, man. So, yeah, I, I don't know how much longer in his career he's got, because that's – if I was Parramatta, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy because coming back from a, another ACL is going to be going to be uh, <laughs> that's going to be a tough one. Uh, Ryan Douglas says that try from power for the Titans was insane. What an upset! Yeah, Titans obviously beat the Broncos down the women's game. Obviously, first time, second, well, first time we've ever played them, and secondly, yes, we've got a hundred percent record against the Broncos women's game. Women's team, don't forget that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we played well, man. We went up to a twelve 0 lead, and then obviously the Broncos came back with the experience, and then we we kicked up. Uh, penalty from right in front, but I'm going to let you know. I believe we could have actually won that game. Don't plus. I could. I believe we should have actually won that game by a lot more. But we kept making the mistakes. We kept throwing it away. You know, on the sideline, we didn't kick the ball out again. We did twice, and then they scored twice off those two mistakes. Every time 
we'd get the penalty, we wouldn't kick it out. It was mad. And anyway, so that's why the Broncos kept scoring their tries. So um, I believe that we are the sole reason that game was closed uh, because of our own, you know, I guess lack of experience and, and whatnot. But yeah, it's bad shit. Back up, back up says, I hope Dad Fee is okay not getting hooked. Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys just don't, you, like, you guys, just, if, you, if a player doesn't get two, three tries in a game, it means that they're shithouse, eh? Is that what you're trying to say, Mega Mega? Like, come on, man. Let's go and have a look at the four times that he dragged. One, one, one of the times he dragged a player over the sideline. Let's go have a look at the three times that he dislodged the ball from his good defense. Oh, but no, he doesn't score two, three tries, so for feed the shit out. Yeah, on attack, he's not looking the greatest because he's not getting the ball. He's not getting the ball. Jaden Campbell's not passing it to him on the run. You know, um, they're, they're not, Aaron Clark's not getting the ball quick enough or Sexton's not getting the ball quick enough. For feed's not getting the ball. So you can't blame him for feeder. Everyone keeps trying to blame for feeder. Yeah, he's on a lot of money. It's not necessarily all his fault. Uh, but in the same sense, I want him to do more. I was complaining about him on the weekend saying he's not doing enough, but you look at the game and you'll see he's not getting the ball. He's putting himself in position a lot of the time, but they're just not going with him because they don't obviously want to overuse him maybe. I don't know. Um, but let's go and have a look at the fact that uh, David Feeder was involved in four turnovers in the weekend, all from the opposition team, not from him. Four. He enforced four turnovers. Fraser Lum says, Titans defense in those second halves have been good, which is good because that's also the half where the game is decided, unless, of course, it's one-sided. Um, that was a tongue twister. But, yeah, yeah, obviously the game is decided in the second half. And yeah, as, long, as long as you don't go down by 20 or so. But then again, the attack seems to drive in that second half too. It seems like they focus on the defense and they kind of let the attack slip away a little bit. Um, I don't really know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. It's, um, it's, it's a tough one to read because they just seem to not be able to score so much in the second half. But then again, that, that game against the Warriors... I'm scrapping that from my mind. I will scrap that right now from my mind that game against the Warriors because although I'm happy the Titans won, if you haven't watched the end of the vlog from yesterday, you'll know that because of that heat, it slowed it up. It really ground out that track. I was speaking to Toby after the game and I didn't, it wasn't in the vlog, uh, but I was speaking to him after the game and it just it prevented anyone from attacking. The Warriors is an attacking team. The Titans are an attacking team. When the players weren't exhausted from the heat, there was free flow in the first half. It, it, it was very similar to how the Eels game went. But the second, the second half obviously slowed it up quite significantly. So um, overall, in the 80 minutes, we've given up four points. That's what I look at. I'm not going to look at the individualities of either game. Uh, but I will say that overall, second half, we've, given up, we've only given up four points. And we've scored two tries. One try in each second half. So uh, we've won both our second halves, which is what I will take. But still a lot of work to be, uh, to be done there. Uh, Maka Packer says, I hope Dave Feeder's okay. Titans not getting the ball as much and coach hooked him early last week. Further Lum says, I didn't say any specific team and I don't want to go for... Yeah, bullshit for us. Don't buddy bulls. Don't bullshit me, man. Don't think I didn't know exactly what team you were talking about. I know who you're talking about. Who you... So you said throughout that two to four game stretch that you're going to probably get to get about two games. So in that two to four game stretch, you played the Roosters, the Panthers and, and the Sharks. Uh, you muppet. You are a loosey, goddamn goosey, mate. Captain James and Broncos. Yeah. Um, yeah, fair enough. Oh, are we frozen? Are we frozen? What's going on? Oh, my screen's frozen. I don't know how to click anything. Oh, we still going? Oh, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Charles Kelly says, I'm just waiting to see his comment and reply to when I had a go at him before because uh, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's not going to be happy. He's not going to be happy. I know it's coming soon. Um... Charles Kelly says, Warriors got the easiest first five games and still can't win. Yes, yes, they do. But you wait till they get to go home. And although uh, you've got to stop using that excuse, the fact of the matter is, is that this is an incredibly tough run for them. This is incredibly tough in regards to having all Australian players in the team for one. Secondly, not being in New Zealand, not getting a home game. And thirdly, it's just been an absolute schmozzle for the last three, four years. They've got so many things going on behind closed doors and off the field that are preventing them from being as good of a club as they can be. Gus Gould left you. He ditched you because he knew how much shit was going on behind closed doors and he knew nothing was going to change because it's just too it's just too up in the air right now. I think he'll go to you guys after he fixes the dogs, give it a couple of years and then he'll go to the Warriors. Um, but yeah, uh, you got to... I know it's hard to say be patient with the Warriors. It is. I know it's very difficult. I know it's very difficult. Uh, Faraz Alarm says, Rooster will be a tough assignment. Oh, here we go. Broncos, tough assignment. You reckon? You reckon the Rooster are going to be a tough assignment for Broncos, yeah? Mm. Mm. Wow, that's a crazy suggestion. Uh, Sanders and my Broncos fan disagree because Panthers and Roosters know how to play. Are you disagreeing with me? I hope you disagree with Faraz. I, I, I pray to God that you're disagreeing with Faraz there. Um, 
Fry says, uh, Sam, they've always been hard to play regardless. Penrith and Penrith, who will get slapped. I just, I disagree. I think you get beaten small, but that's because you guys have some weird ability to lose to them all the time, but always be close. You have a really weird ability to lose the Broncos very close all this, every single time. Go and have a look at your record against them. Go and have a look at your most recent record against them, and you'll see you always lose, but it's always so close. It's crazy. Um, but Bruce will slap you. Bruce is will, will absolutely slap you. Cox says, what fans are the biggest muppets after Eels and Broncos? Oh, um, when the Tigers are good, then. Not now, though. Not now. When the Tigers are good, then. Like, they called Leichhardt the eighth or ninth funny uh, one of the world or some shit. It's like, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't even think it's the best atmosphere, even close, in the NRL. Um, but uh, the, the Tigers, when they're good, not now, though. They're, they're good now. They're fine now. Uh, who else would be? Panthers are getting pretty, pretty up themselves and thinking that they're the Panthers. Panthers, the problem with the Panthers is that they think that they're already the Storm and the Roosters. You ain't the Storm and the Roosters yet. You won one time. You've won one time. You ain't the Panthers, the, the Storm and the Roosters yet, man. You've got to relax. You just wait a little bit. Uh, Manly used to be, but not Manly anymore. Yeah, Manly, uh, Manly quite quiet. They've actually really changed as a club. It's really weird. Their fans have gone and just hit in the corner or something like that. It's really strange. They used to be very, you know, influential in the, in the community and really out there in the community, but you never hear them anymore. You just, you never hear them anymore. Uh, Frenchie says, thoughts on the shit Eels defense? Uh, yeah, the Eels have been super disappointing this year so far. The first two games, they have looked really average, uh, really, really average. Uh, I still think they're probably pushing to that top four spot, but in the same sense, a lot of those teams, that, a lot of the better teams have actually looked worse and a lot of the you know bad teams have actually looked better. I could see the Eels finishing anywhere between four and eight, the way they're playing, but they're still going to probably finish around, I, I'd still say four or five. Uh, but yeah, their defense looks really average. It does. Obviously, they come against two attacking teams, so in the Titans and Sharks, who use very positive kind of attacking. They're very attacking fluidity kind of team. Unlike the Dragons, not really like that. Unlike the Bulldogs, who are oh, Bulldogs are now kind of like that with Trent Barrett. Um, unlike the Warriors, who are obviously not. Or, or, yeah, there's a few teams that I go, I guess, go against what I'm saying there. So with the Titans and Sharks, they're very attacking teams. And the Eels haven't looked great so far. So wait until they play a team that doesn't exactly. Because we're only two rounds in. I keep reminding you guys this. We're only two rounds in. So do understand that we're not really going to. When we do this stream, one of these streams, one of the podcasts, after round six, round seven, I'll stop saying it's only. Then I'll start saying, well, shit, you've had six, seven weeks now to get into it. You still haven't gotten into it. Well, what's going on, you fellas? You know, what's going on? The Eels still conceding 20 to 30 points a game. Then, okay, well, you ain't winning shit this year. Uh, but it's only two rounds in, so that's the that's that's what I have to give him. Uh, Fraser Lum says, honestly, Tigers can suck magic. It won't do them any better. The whole club is in a mess. Uh, yeah, probably, because the Tigers can absolutely win the spoon, regardless. I don't think the Warriors can win the spoon with David Brown, but I think that the Tigers can absolutely win the spoon with Madge. So, you know, yeah, I, I would agree with that for us. You, you, you're not a very agreeable person half the time, but I'll agree with that one, mate. <laughs> I'll agree with that one. Uh, Ryan Zagos says, Tedesco went to the Roosters at the start of 2018. Okay, so was it a part of Magic? Did Magic get rid of him? There's no way. Sure not. Did Magic get rid of him? I'm going to see this comment in about 14 minutes' time. Um, but did Magic actually get rid of him? Gee whiz. Uh, Sebastian Garrett says, Helicopter bot, man of the weekend. Oh, that was incredible, dude. That was better than sex. I actually think that was genuinely better than sex. Yep. Yep, that was genuinely better than sex. Um, that was unbelievable. You know, that was... If we didn't have that, I may have died at that time. I think I may have passed away and we might not have gotten the second half of the vlog. You would have probably got the vlog out the first half because I would have got, you know, someone else would have done it in my memory. But, uh, geez, that, that game. Oh, dear, me, Sebastian. It's pretty amazing. You have never experienced it in Romania. Let's put it that way. Okay, Sebastian? You have never experienced that kind of heat. You have never, ever, ever. And that was not the hottest day we've had on the Gold Coast for a game. About five, six years ago, we had a Titans Tiger game, Titans Tigers game. It was way hotter than that, and that was ridiculously. It was probably about three to five degrees hotter than what we had on the weekend. I think we had, I think that was like twenty. I think that was maybe thirty-six in the ground, which would have put it inside a stadium. Usually, it brings it up about five six, so it was about 40, 41 inside the stadium. Um, it was wild, and then we, I think, it was about 44, 45 in the stadium when we had that Titans Tigers game. There were kids passing out. There were kids passing out. It was ridiculous. It was it was wild. Stadiums, firstly, NRL, dickheads. They need to be doing differently. They need to be moving differently and putting the um, 
the, put the games on bad times for the fans because they just don't think about the fans. They can think about the corporates and they're like, oh, let's get the money, you know, let's get them into their network and get 2 p.m. the day. That's cool. Uh, but the fans honestly have to suffer. But the second thing that I was going to say was that they need to have like those at some sporting events. Uh, I don't know what sporting events I've been to, but they have like water. They have like the, the water blasters. Like people walk around. Like they, uh, even the mascots, you know, they come around, they blow out, they, they do the water guns and shit. People love it. I know they, people, people love that shit. I would love that shit. Drench me, baby. Drench me. Your your contract with Movie World, I guarantee you have the sprinklers in the roof. Chuck them on, baby. Chuck that shit on. For us, it's Queensland, New South Wales Derby this week. Let's get it. Uh, Queensland, New South Wales Derby this week. Let's get it. What's this in? Queensland, New South Wales Derby? Is this in the A-League or something like that? Which, what did we talk about here? Unless I'm schizzing, because Broncos Cowboys is on. Titans Raiders is on. Uh, surely this is like A-League or something. Or, or unless it took the Reds and Moritars, maybe? Shit, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Spacey says, what about the 01 Grand Final? Do you think the Eels will switch on versus Melbourne? The 01 Grand Final, I was seven years old, mate. So <laughs> I can't really remember that one. I know that the, the comeback and whatnot, but the fact of the matter is I was seven years old. So I'm never going to give you that as a big rating because I didn't watch it live. Uh, do I think the Eels, and if, unless you were older than like 12, then you probably shouldn't be rating it because you probably didn't watch it live either. Uh, but overall, would have been a good Grand Final for anyone who watched it. And do you think the Eels will switch on against Melbourne? Uh, Eels, for some reason, recently have a good record against Melbourne. Last year, they obviously beat them twice. Uh, the first game was in torrential conditions, like horrific rain. Uh, the second game, obviously, yeah, they beat the Storm. But the Eels, they're usually the, the, the bogey team of the Eels is usually the Storm. But now it seems like it switched around. So I don't know. Uh, I, I definitely could see the Eels winning, but you'll have to be a member to check out my tips um, this week. Um, doing pretty well my tips right now. Doing very well my tips, actually. Uh, Fraser Lambs, best game you've been to? Uh, I'd probably say, uh, but if we're talking, we're talking NRL. This is an NRL podcast. We'll go NRL. Um, NRL, best game I've been to, probably, I've uh, a lot, man. That Dragons really week years back, I think 2018 semis was pretty mad where Reynolds kicked three field goals. They went, they went up 11-10. The Dragons then kicked a penalty to go 12-11. And then Reynolds gets another field goal to make it 12-12. And then Reynolds gets another field goal to make it 13-12. It was wild. I think that was the game in 2018. There's a vlog on the channel. It was wild. But, yeah, I've been to a few, man. It's hard to specify just one. Uh, Faraz says, yeah, I've been here since 2021. I kind of stopped watching YouTubers because back since the ashes and whatnot been sold since. Mate, you better watch this. You better have your notification bell on. While, while we're waiting here, guys, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new here. And tell Faraz right now, chuck his notification bell on. And shush. Just tell him to shush and chuck his notification bell on. Uh, Till Chungus says Broncos. I want you to say shush for us in the chat. That's what I want to say. Uh, Till Chungus says Broncos, Titans, final in the NRLW. Final could be cool. Would be cool. I'm looking for Broncos fans. Um, <laughs> but no, I think it would be great. I still think the Dragons probably get there. I do think it's going to be Dragons, Bronx. Uh, but I would love to see the Titans get into it, man. You know, I love the way they're playing right now. Um, I, I won't be able to stream the women's games this weekend, unfortunately, because I'll be in Canberra uh, going to the Titans Raiders game with my boy Clarkie. Uh, so we'll be there at that game. And then obviously I'll be flying back up and I'll stream the Timmy Sue versus Boucher fight on Sunday. So I want to do the women's camps this week. But I'll tell you what, I'm super looking forward to uh, what the women's can do. Trevor Ariza says, thoughts on David Feeder. I think he's absolutely fantastic. And I think the people who uh, pick on him don't really understand kind of the game of rugby league and don't realize what he actually does. They just look for him for tries and he's a second rower. Uh, they look for him for good meters. Sometimes he doesn't do it. Sometimes he does do it, but he's not getting the ball. They aren't giving the ball. They, they, they need to give him the ball more. Now, James, I picked five out of six last weekend in the NRLW. What? Uh, no, you didn't. I picked five out of six last weekend. No, no, you didn't. Cause, no, there's only three games. Uh, Dragon first ninth game just needed LCR with the score and I would have uh, cleaned. Oh, multi. You've got to make us under, uh, underwear. You've got to make us underwear. Underwear? You've got to make us aware of what this is, mate. A multi would have cleaned up 1100 off 10 bucks. Elsie Albert's score, that's a big bopper, you know, but Elsie Albert's the best front row in the game for me. I honestly have her above Millie Boyle, uh, but them two are just unbelievable, dude. They are really just simply unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, I wish uh, I, I wish you got it, man. I wish you got it. Trevor Reese, love the fact that Titans will probably come top six. Ah, what a comment. Yay. Now we're talking, baby. Now we're talking. Now we are uh, now we're talking. Now we're talking, son. Jordan McCurley, his high great comeback by South just lost by point. That's great. That was shit house for 75 minutes or 70 minutes that game, though. So that's not... Forget that one. Sam says, what do you think about Stag's defense when he played both games? I think it's strong as hell. Yeah, it's great. It's strong as hell. Uh, he got burnt in the Titans versus Broncos preseason trial game, though, by a 18-year-old. But, uh, yeah, Jojo Fafita slapped him in that game, which was really odd. Uh, so, yeah, I think Stag's defense in the regular season has been fantastic. But I, I, I can't forget what happened in that 
Broncos trial preseason game. Honestly, it was really strange from Staggs. He he got burnt pretty pretty convincingly. It was wild. Uh, but yeah, I, I love Staggs, man. Everyone knows in the channel that I love Staggs. Uh, Franz Alonso, Franz Alonso, I got six out of eight. I'm so dumb for actually believing the Tigers could turn up. Well done. Welcome to my life. Because uh, no Ponga, and then I see no Clemmer or Saifidi. I'm like, surely the Tigers have some dignity, at least with this game. Right there is your first mistake for us. This is what you got to think. I never made the mistake of thinking the Tigers could have some dignity. They know, I, know, I, never, I know they're never going to have dignity. The Tigers, no way. The, the day the Tigers have dignity, oh, shit, man. That'll be the day. That'll, that will be the day I've got to make a nine fan. Holy man. Uh, Jordan McKellis is tight. Stop eight. <laughs> Mate, we've got some great comments here. This is, um, this is some absolutely fantastic comments here. Uh, Tim Tonga says, uh, I don't understand why Butcher has been named the starting team over Crichton. Uh, must be an injury. Must be something that we haven't. Um, must be something that we haven't seen just yet. Uh, Sebastian Grandma says, excessive amount of thoughts. Yeah, I did see that in the comments just there. <laughs> I did see that to be fair. X Factor CCGs. The is better than the Storm and the Roosters, hands down. And we're getting better, baby. Let's go back to bat 2022. And this, my friends, is why people think Panthers fans have become dickheads. Jay Dorso, the big fella, says, who's the Titans sign for 23? Nah, he's just getting by his team, by the way, but still, dickhead. Uh, Jay Dorso says, who's the Titans sign for 23? Uh, I think Aaron Clark's been good, man. I think Aaron Clark has actually been good for the Titans this year. And I told you guys, I was back in the more preseason. I said, um, Aaron Clark can actually be quite good because he's a stabilizer. Um, hasn't been as bad as what people thought he was going to be. Uh, Toby Sexton and Brimo, they're going to leave. Jaden Campbell, they're going to leave. They're going to leave. Um, Felt Sunday, Corey Thompson and Matsu. Uh, maybe they might look to the centers with Brighton, Kelly, and, and Patrick Herbert because Patrick Herbert gets a lot of shit his way, but I still think he's a pretty good center, man. Um, the forwards are looking pretty good there with the Isaac Liu and uh, and who's that? Mike Fonawaka. For, for That's very young and, and obviously experienced there. I think, if anything, it's just going to be added on the bench or it's going to be a nine. I, I, honestly, I, I have liked Aaron Clark, but that is literally the only position that people are thinking. It's the nine of the centers that people are probably going to be looking at. It's the nine of the centers that people are probably going to be uh, kind of eyeing off there. Uh, John McKellar says, Bulldogs are Muppets when it comes to round one. Bulldogs are Muppets. And that's it. Medvedev says, X Factor, he meant over the years, Storm and Trucks have been the most consistent team for the last decade. Oh, no, he knows what it meant. He's a Panthers fan. He knows what it meant, but he doesn't give a shit. Uh, Frenchie says, but holy shit, Simonson is overrated. No, he's not, because he wasn't rated by anyone who knew what they were talking about. Uh, like, he's okay, but he's not great. He hasn't done great here, but he was, no, he's not overrated, because no one who knew the game thought much was going to come from him. Uh, but you'll get other people out there who won't come and tell you that, oh, every single player is going to be fantastic, but uh, no. Uh, that's not how it works. Nate J says, lots of Panthers fans come out of the closet last year, and where I live is playing them nowadays, without doubt Panther fans are the biggest puppets. Yeah, I kind of agree, but in the same sense, there's a lot of Broncos fans nowadays. There's a lot of Broncos fans. The last two, three years, oh my goodness, mate. It's, it's been beautiful. It's, it's just been, you can sit back, you can just put your hands up, find your head, you can just enjoy it. You just enjoy it because the serenity of no Broncos fans. But now, they're just coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly how they sound. It's exactly how they sound. Jay Dawson says, no, the helicopter was very loud and so high-pitched. You shut your dirty mouth. Don't ever insult that helicopter. If you, were you in the shade? No, Jay Dawson. I want, to, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to, I want to see your message here. Did you sit in the sun or shade? If you say you sat in the shade, I want you to get this. I want to slap yourself because how dare you insult that helicopter? How dare you? Afro says, Blaze, you only say that because I'm a Broncos fan. You have a group of me 70% otherwise, especially in cricket, and he probably don't like me too much. But, yeah, this is – he's taking it too deep, guys. He's deep. He's, <laughs> he really just deeped whatever. Whatever I said 10 minutes ago, he um, <laughs> he made it really deep, and I don't get why he made it really deep. Uh, Ryan Tucker says, I don't know if Maguire got rid of Tedesco or not. I just know he came in 2018, and Maguire came in 2019, and Ivan Curry was the coach of them. Well, there you go, mate. That there, Well, there you go. There would uh, – there you go. Well, here we go. What's Fraz saying now? Uh, Broncos says Cowboys, Queensland, Derby, and Rabbitohs versus Roosters, New South Wales. Derby feels weird calling it Sydney because it's not a state. But you said Queensland versus New South Wales. Oh, you said Queensland and New South Wales. Yeah, your comment's very confusing. You have to say, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You don't say Queensland and New South Wales, Derby, because that you'd be looking at individual. No, that's, no, 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 that's not how it does it. That's not how it works. Jed also says, how does finals work in the NRW? I'm not sure. It's actually a good question. I want to, maybe if you go here to the draw and you can have a look, I think it's I think the top four teams get in 
And then first was four, second was third, maybe. Um, I'm not too sure. Someone in the chat can let me know here. I think first four get in, and then well, maybe make sure. Maybe it might show it here. Uh, round, oh no, I'm looking at the men's. Uh, Tells you women's premiership because this is the last round, mind you. Don't forget, this is the last round of the women's game. It's uh, on Saturday and the two games on Sunday. If the Broncos, I would love the Broncos to beat the Eels because that means the Titans will come third because we should beat the Knights this week. Um, if the Eels win, then we'll, we'll come fourth more than likely because uh, I don't see the Roosters beating the Dragons. Uh, the Dragons will put a score through the Roosters and then we'd have to take on the Dragons, I believe, and the Broncos would have to take on the Knights. Uh, the Broncos would have to take on the Eels again, actually. Uh, unless the, if the Broncos win, then the Broncos will have to take on the Titans in the first round, if the Titans obviously beat the Knights. But if the Eels win, then I would assume, based on what my thoughts are right now, that the Broncos would have to take on the Eels again in, in that first round. But I could be skitting it. Like I said, I don't really know a great deal or too much about it. Uh, Broncos says, Blaze, you're going to see this beef 20 minutes later. I'm just kind of skipping over it, but I'm just kind of skipping over it, to be fair. And there is a lot of it to skip over. Uh, Anushka Sin says uh, they should butt for feeder as 5 8 so we can kick ball. <sighs> Mepadev says Stags is better attacking. Uh, yes, yeah, Stags is obviously, well, yeah, he's a very good attacker. He is. Ah, another Broncos fan. Here you go. See, they're all coming out now. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I told you, mate. I told you. They're coming out of the woodworks, son. They are coming out of the woodworks. Uh, Hill Fries, I think he means when, when coming to the Eels overhyped. Oh, yeah, Simon Simon going to the Eels has, yeah, absolutely been overhyped. Um, but that's because you listen to people online who tell you that every player is A+. plus. Every player is, whoa, wow, this player going here. Wow, man, that's going to be unbelievable, man. That's going to be like the best team ever. That team's going to win the competition. That's what you, uh, half of you guys listen to. You listen to people who tell you what you want to hear. I ain't going to tell you what you want to hear. Because I had to witness last night on the television show, Top Boy, the one that I love and I watch, I had to watch one of my favourite characters die. So please, spare me. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on here. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on here. That was, it was brutal, man. It was brutal. The last episode, the end of the episode, holy shit. I'm not going to tell you who dies if you guys watch Top Boy. But if you don't watch Top Boy, oh, jeez. Deal with me. Tommy says, Blaze, when's the wedding with the helicopter, man? If it was tomorrow, I could do it tomorrow, mate. I could do it tomorrow. Uh, Darren knows the helicopter's have feeling too. Exactly right. He's going to ride Jay Dawson. He says it was on south southeast side in the sun. Southeast side. Okay, so you were in the sun just as much as me. Ah, but you wouldn't have got the wind as good as I did. Ah, see, I'm like a detective over here. I'm like a buddy BKR detective over here. Forget BKR sport. I'm BKR detective over here. That's why you're talking shit because you didn't get to experience the beauty that was the um, the beauty that was that uh, that helicopter. Special grabbers. I just want to see a nice fan who has the balls to admit that they've had a good start. But this beautiful dream won't last long. Enjoy the moment. Be realistic and don't get carried away. The funny thing is that Knights fans are usually quite realistic. I actually don't think the Knights fans are too out of control. Um, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not too crazy with Knights overall. But yeah, they do. They are getting quite excited right now. Um, and fair enough. If the Titans were top two right now, I'd know when I can. Sorry, if the Titans were top. I, well, we're not going to finish top of the table, but we'd have more of a chance of finishing top than the Knights do right now. But Overall, if, if the Titans were top, top number one, I'd be going crazy. I'd be saying, hey, Dick, everybody predicted, predicted us for the bottom four, which is exactly what everyone predicted the Knights to be. Everyone predicted the Knights to be bottom four. I said 15. I can't be having them just outside the eight, maybe about 10th, 11th. But then again, I've dropped the Warriors down because they're not looking good. You know, I'm going to bump the Dragons maybe up. I bump the Broncos maybe up to ninth. Um, the Rabbitohs could drop out of the eighth, though, but I think the Rabbitohs will come together at some point. So I still think I'm happy with my eight. I'm still happy with my... Uh, Storm, Roosters, Penrith, Eels. Uh, Manly could come down. I honestly could see the Titans going above them, and I could see the Sharks going above Manly. But Manly should put a score to Bordeaux. We'll come back next week and we'll decide about Manly. We'll come back next week, and you know what? I'll put it on the side here. We'll put a screen up, and we're going to go through a table predictor, and I'm going to see. We're going to do it. We'll do that next week. Um, Frenchie says, uh, dude, I called you a Muppet once. Who's a Muppet? Me. Uh, you're a Muppet, mate. How about that one? You like that one? You like that one? Anushka Singh says, the feet are big and strong, so he should be put at halfback and put that strength in the kicking. And AJ, Fred, there's no class of bed time. We're getting cranky now. So what are your pajamas and ready for bed, dude? Jeez, you guys are... you. you. <laughs> I'm caught up now. You know why I'm caught up? I'm caught up to the chat because there's just about 150 comments from you muppets going to talk a shit to each other. Just going, Francis, buddy. No, you that. 
the bloody Frazzies and the bloody Broncos are going to win the comp that. That's just what I see right now. So now I'm, I'm all the way at the bottom. I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, but uh, he's, uh, he's still going. Ryan Zagos is for feet of 5'8". What about Mitchell Moses for prop? Yeah, Mitchell Moses going into prop, you know. Uh, good looking uh, good looking that one. You know, that'd be interesting to to chuck him into that uh, prop position. Uh, you know, just as much as we'll chuck Jaden Campbell in the prop too. You know, Jaden Campbell, Mitchell Moses as two props. That'd be fantastic to see. Bronx Nation underscore fan says, can't wait until Sunday Arvo going to the, go the Broncos game, one of the only games I can go to this year. Um, I'm considering going to it. I'll be in the, I'll be in Canberra. Oh, like I said, I'll be going down to, for the Raiders and Titans game at uh, at Canberra. And uh, I, I'm going to come back on Sunday morning because I want to stream the Timmy 2 versus Goucher fight, which means I can't do the women's games. But if I stream the Timmy 2 versus Goucher fight, then I'm not going to go to the game and I'll just stream the Broncos and Cowboys game alongside. What's the other game on this weekend? What is the other game on this weekend? Uh, on Sunday, sorry. It is the Manly Bulldogs game. That actually might get quite a few views on that. I don't know. It probably is better for me to actually probably stream it there. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be uh, – it, it'll be interesting. But, yeah, I, I would consider going to that Broncos Cowboys game because they're usually quite close games, even though it's not going to be a great – the greatest of games overall. For us, favourite Titans win of all time. Titans Warriors 2010 semi-final. Absolutely. Easy days. Wrap that, wrap that shit up immediately. Um, and then it says, is it a tradition for Broncos to always play Friday night games? I've noticed that over the years the Broncos mostly play Friday night matches, or is it just me? <laughs> Are you new? You new to this? This is this, you're new to this, aren't you? Well, welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, first of all, yeah, this I think it's all about money than the storm. Um, <laughs> I can't believe someone just asked about <laughs> Broncos and Friday night games, mate. That is, it's either Friday night games or Sunday afternoon games with the Broncos, and usually it's the Friday night games. Sunday, occasionally they'll get. Uh, but let's go have a look at this guys. Oh, look, Broncos Cowboys, Sunday afternoon. There you go. See, they get the secondary game then. They get the secondary game. Next week, we'll see. Oh, early game on a Saturday. Jeez, enjoy that one at Red Club because that's going to be a hot mother bitch. That's going to be a hot mother bitch there. 2 p.m. next Saturday, NRL, man. Come on, man. Think about your fans. Holy damn. Uh, and the week after that, they get the Roosters. On a Friday night. Whoa, whoa. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Ah, Panthers on a Friday night. Wow. Bulldogs on a Friday night. Oh, man. How good is that? How good is that? Round eight. Thursday night. Oh, man. Prime time. Prime time. Um, oh, they're not on. Oh, but then they, when are they on here? Oh, they're not even on. They're on Thursday night again. When are they going to get a Saturday game? Do they have a single Saturday game? Another Friday night game? I want to see if they have any Saturday games this year. Do they have a single Saturday game this year? Uh, oh, the, no, Broncos Titans. Actually, that Titans, that Warriors game was. So they've got one game through the first th- 13 rounds. That is a non, not notable game for TV. One game. Uh, ah, I guess the Rays. We get a good one there. So two out of the first 14 rounds. Two out of 14. Another Friday night game there. People coming in right now just like, what's this guy doing? He's sitting on a podcast and all he's doing is looking at the Broncos schedule. Broncos? Why would they put Broncos Cowboys on a Saturday? The shit. Checks the NRL. That's shocker. They're shocking. They're shocking. Uh, Sam says, I can't wait to see Adam Reynolds in the Heritage jersey in 2022. I can. Why do you care so much about what he looks like in the Heritage jersey in 2022? Uh, Alex says, Moses and Campbell move to prom. I'll become BK Sport. You'll become, you'll become me. So that means you won't become me. But you'll, you'll already be. Oof, wow, shit. Well, that's that's the bloody Inception movie right, written all over it. Tommy says, I remember I was at Brookie for Manly Power Game. It was in 40 degree heat. Yeah. Yeah, is that right? Is that right, mate? Is that right? Is, where are you? Wow. Well, wow, is that right? Jared Troy, the Broncos annually have the most favourable draw. Uh, yep, no shit, Sherlock. Absolutely. Captain Troy, Jack, Captain James, the Broncos don't know how to play in the sun. Bingo. That's why they're going to get probably slapped. Actually, that's this week, isn't it? Did I just read out that's this, this week? No, they, no, they play Cowboys this week. Next week. Oh, man. Oh, man. Anyone who laughs, Warriors Sands have to go through shit in regards to that because that's going to be another hot game for them, man. And it's going to slow up their attack and that's going to favor the defense. The Broncos have better defense than the Warriors right now. Ryan Zaman says, is it just me or the Warriors never play at nighttime, always in the afternoon? Yeah, but that's because of the scheduling for the, the New Zealand audience. You've got to realize that Queensland is two hours behind New Zealand. Sydney is one hour behind New Zealand. Melbourne is one hour behind New Zealand. So you need to schedule it. So that 2 p.m. game was 4 p.m. in New Zealand. Better time, you know. Uh, the fr- the Friday night games the Warriors get is always the 6 p.m. game because that means it's 8 p.m. in New Zealand or 7 p.m. in... So no, 8 p.m. in New Zealand, yeah, because 6 p.m. Oh, 
No, if it's in Sydney at 6 p.m., it'll be 7 p.m. in New Zealand. If it's in Queensland at far oh, shit, I don't know. Point of matter is, is that uh, yeah, it's done for the fact that obviously they're a couple of hours ahead of us. By the way, guys, we've got about we'll be here for maybe 20 more minutes or so, 20, 25 more minutes. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already subscribed. You know, let's see if we can get to 15,400 uh, during the stream. Um, Uh, let's see if we can wrap it on down. Uh, on the subscribe button. Uh, now, Jason, how Croak and Rapana have played with Berra this year is outrageous. Uh, oh, Croak is injured, for one. Um, he's done pretty much, man. I think his career is pretty much effectively done. He's had a fantastic year, but a fantastic career, sorry, but he's effectively done. Rapana, uh, I don't even know what's going on with him. Either. I don't know what's happening with him overall. Uh, Jared Choice is not talking about who they play, but when they play. All the above. Uh, Fraser loves his next I reckon Kroger could go Super League, finish his career off there. Looks like Ricky won't pick him again, which is sad, or seems like the game's got away from a lot. I'm pretty certain he's injured, isn't he? Isn't he injured? Who is the radio sense right now? I do, to be fair, I would prefer, I'm I'm going, if I'm the coach of the Camper Raiders, right, I am selecting Matty Tomoko and Sammy Valame right now with Jared Kroger. Um, it just is what it is, man. Um, you know, I they're two young guys. They're island boys. You know, they're, they're two guys that I would prefer in Kroger. It is what it is. Yeah, Kroger's not even on the extended reserves. I think he's injured, lads. I'm pretty certain that he skips in it and he's injured. Man, I said I'm new to this. Sorry. No, no, no. I know you're new to this, but I just, everyone everyone knows Broncos get Friday night games. <laughs> or Sunday games. It just is what it is. Um, Zephyr says he's transcended to, to Bacane, Bacane Sport. Uh, yep, there we go. Uh, Forever Saints supports I'm in Melbourne. Well, I'll be damned, mate. Well, I'll I'll be damned, mate. Bronx Nation fan says, who would you consider the most underrated players going? Any club. Uh, Corey Thompson for the Titans, absolutely. Who else is there? Uh, I'll go. I'll try to pick through each club because we're still going to be here for another 25 minutes or so. Uh, while I do this, thumbs up and subscribe. But Corey Thompson for the Titans. For the Broncos, uh, you kind of need to go through and have a look at the actual players in the team. So, because... For the Raiders, I don't think there is an underrated player. Oh, Tommy Starling, but then again, I think people are starting to realise that. And he'll get a good crack now with, uh, obviously, uh, Joshie Hodgson gone the season. So, yeah, you'll, you'll probably see a lot more of Tommy Starling. Um, who else should we be looking at there? Let's go and have a look at the Dragons and Sharks. The Dragons, I'd probably be looking at Ben Hunt, obviously. Ben Hunt is so underrated. It's ridiculous. Because he dropped one ball in a grand final, everyone forgets how good he is. You know, Ben Hunt is a fantastic player. Uh, and he obviously pulled the, the Queenslanders along the line that, that gag three last year uh, from the hooker roll, which I believe he's better at. You know what it is? You know, it, it just is what it is, man. Uh, for the Sharks, I don't really think there is an underrated player there at the Sharks, but I don't think people all know exactly what to get from that team and what, what their players kind of represent there. I'm not even going to look at Tigers or game. I'm not even going to look at that team, Tigers. I'm not even going to look at them. Uh, underrated there for the Rabbitohs. Uh, uh. I don't know. I don't think there is an underrated there. Maybe Jai Arrow, but he's gone down from what he used to be like. Uh, I wouldn't even say anyone for the Rabbitohs there. Roosters, we'd probably be looking at Tupanua. I think he, or Takia. No, nah, I'd always say Tupanua. I think he'd be very underrated. Uh, class is very underrated. And in the centres, uh, no, nah, nothing really there. Nothing really there. I'd say Tupanua is probably for the Roosters there. Uh, who else? Let's go to the Panthers. A nice game. Panthers going to be a hard press one find. Someone underrated because most of them are real. I like Target, but he's rated now because obviously people are starting to see him a lot more. Uh, who, who would be Liam Martin? Absolutely. Easy Liam Martin the Panthers. Easy Liam Martin the Panthers. He is one of the most underrated players in the competition. I think he does so much there uh, that it, is, it, it makes me sick that he's not he's not given the credit that he deserves there um, at the pennies. Uh, I actually thought Jake Clifford would probably be the guy, but obviously now people are starting to really look into him a lot more. Mitchell Barnett for the Knights is probably. The most underrated there. He does a lot for them. Uh, but Jake Clifford going into this year would have been. I tried to put him up there a little bit higher in the uh, tier rankings. But, uh, you know, people didn't see it like I did. They didn't see it. He's not too bad. Storm, we're going to be looking straight towards... Oh, Ma oh no, Maxi King's not there anymore. He's a dog. Well, for the dogs, Maxi King. <laughs> for the dogs, it's going to be Maxi King. I can't think of anyone for the Storm here. I can't see any name here that would be classed as underrated. For the Eels... And not Simonson. <laughs> Mitchell Moses is actually rel relatively underrated because people shit on him uh, unnecessarily. They really do. Nathan Brown was, but he's gone backwards a little bit. Obviously, he's getting a bit agey now. The old Nathan Brown. Uh, and then Broncos, Cowboys. For the Broncos, I'd probably say Farnworth, easy, most underrated there. And Peter Hickey for the Cowboys. I think Hickey's had, had a great year. 
I've been loving Hiku in those Cowboys games, to be fair. People haven't been talking about him, but Peter Hiku has actually been really fun to watch and doing a lot for that Cowboys team. Um, and then for the Manly Dogs, I'd say Manly, geez, their centers are not great, eh? Uh, Manly, I would say, I'd probably lean towards saying Jaden Dubovic, to be fair. I would. I'd lean towards saying Jaden Dubovic because he used to be unbelievable, but people have really slowed down on him, man. Uh, they've really gone off him. And I still think he does a whole heap of work there. Martin Tapao used to be, but he doesn't do a great deal of money. I'd say Jake Dubovic, and I know it's crazy to say because he's had such a successful career, but I'm telling you, people have really forgotten about him quite significantly. Um, and then for the doggies, we would probably go for who would we go? The doggies. Uh, Matt King. Matt King. Absolutely. All right, let's go back into the chat. That's who I'd go from each of those clubs. There, to be fair. Uh, what about Savage? Uh, that's a good one, young Korean. He Savage is a cheeky shout there for the Raiders. To be fair, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind a bit of uh, Savage. Oh, look, to be fair for the Raiders, I'd look at either of their centres. Oh, I'd mainly look at Matty Tomoko. Um, he'd definitely be someone who I'd class as underrated there. Yeah, Matty Tomoko. And Xavier Savage is rated, actually. No, I disagree. Xavier Savage is rated. Ricky Stewart's point picking. Because Nick Clockstar is just too good. Nick Clockstar is still a really good fullback, man. So it's, it's a tough situation for Xavier Savage. Uh, because Nick Clockstar is just simply good. And it's very difficult to force his way into that team there, to be honest with you. Uh, but I don't think he's underrated. I think people know about him. Nate Jay says, lots of young guns in the canvas for the moment. Croker and Rapana have been playing reserve grade. I swear Croker's injured, is he not? I swear he is. Fraser Lump says, bro, what's happened to Thompson? Is he still injured? I think he's out for another two or so weeks. I think he's out for another two or so weeks. Um, nice work, Daz. So what's Daz done? Daz is done. I can't even see him here in the chat, to be fair. Uh, Fraser Lump says, finally, Herbie, Herbie's getting a talk. I've been saying it for years. You should know that. It deserves, because Stags will always get it, but nice to see that Herbie gets his spotlight. I've been saying it for years. You should know that. Go have a look at the team rankings from last year. About that one. From last year. I was talking about it. Um, most underrated for the Eels, probably Nathan Brown, maybe not sure. Was not anymore. Not anymore for me. Not anymore. Uh, for the Saints supporter says, who do you think is the worst fullback is? Any club. Isaka when he's playing fullback. Uh, <laughs> but when he's playing wings, good. For worst fullback right now, it's, but it's, it's tough because there's... I'm not even going to shoot in a play like this. I'm not going to shoot in a play. No, I'm not going to get that negativity going, to be fair. Uh, I'm not going to shoot in a play. Uh, Smashing Grammar says, I would love to see Blaze let Rickmore go on that, man. Guys are flogged. Guys are racist. JJ says, who was the 18-year-old playing for the Rabbits? Uh, this week? Is there an 18-year-old playing for the Rabbits? Or are you talking about last week? I don't know. Uh, let me go have a look. Let me go have a look here. Rabbits and Roosters. Uh, what's their team list lining up here for this one? Latrell, Tyne, Mill, Lachlan, Ilias, uh, Kalamatangi, Jane Post, Olivia. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, Sam says, Hunt is a good player when he gets the ball. Well, usually in rugby league, you need to get the ball. When you get the ball, usually you can do something with it if you're a good player. And uh, when he gets the ball, it's good. So, you know, it's just don't know. I kind of feel sorry for Hunt. It's true that fans will most likely remember him, mostly remember him by that knock-on he made in that great final. I want him to do good this season. I think everyone wants him to do good, man, because he's a good player. But people just shit on him for no reason, to be fair. Moses not even top 16. See, there we go. Exactly right. See, now, see, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Sam says Hunt is a good player when he gets the ball most of the time. Guys, of course, when he gets the ball. How can you be a good player if you're not getting the ball? This should be self-explanatory, mate. It should be self-explanatory, mate. For other sense, what about the hammer from the cows? Uh, I think there's a bit more to come from him, to be fair, be quite, to, to really, you know, pull it all out. But I think most people should understand who he is. Uh, for other sense, I'm the same thing as a guard. His attack was so good and guided our side. And the Broncos won. Milford gets Clive Church all that night. He was that good. And it's always about the Broncos, isn't it? Like, it's always back to the Broncos. Uh, then this is Max King with the dogs. Absolutely, my boy, my boy, Maxi King. Oh, man, obviously, I think I really believe he got screwed quite heavily at the Storm. Uh, I, I liked him at the Titans, but obviously, just wasn't able to get, get into the team. It was a tough time with the Titans as well when he was there. Uh, but now I'm so happy for for my boy, Maxi King, at the uh, at the big old Canterbury Bull Uh No, I'm not going to rate Pesco. You're an idiot. You are an idiot. Brian to O's injury looks bad, apparently. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen... I don't know what Brian to O's injury is. All I know is that he's injured and he's out for quite a long time, which sucks to see because you don't want to see that for any team or any person to get an injury like that. Um, Malcolm says, you think Warriors can turn season around and finish top five? Nate J says, Moses complains about getting hit late after kicking, but he stays in the air longer than any other kicker in the game. It's a blade sook. 
Uh, yeah, but see, this is the thing, and this is what I say to you guys all the time. Eels fans have an absolute knack of uh, complaining, saying, well, it was me. But then when things go things go for them, they're like, oh, suck it up, man. Suck it up, man. Nah, that wasn't the wrong call. Nah. Like, they're still trying to pretend like that game last week with the Titans. Like, we've moved on from it, right? Like, they're still talking shit on my comments. They keep commenting on my videos. Saying, ah, oh, nah, you ain't broke your dog. Yeah. It's exactly how they sound. And uh, it, it really is a thing with Eels fans. They just, just, it really is crazy. They just can't see what 99% of the competition is saying. Eels fans, they are something. They are, uh, they are something. You know, Broncos fans are like, eh, 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 eh. but they're like, ah. That's what the Eels fans sound like. Fred Alarm says, he can't defend. He needs to be dropped. Maybe you have Alan the week. <laughs> Alan, jeez, yeah, he's not really much of a replacement, to be fair. Um, Young Guru says, do you think Dean Mariner is the next best thing? I'm not too sure. Tashi Kelson says, you and Aiken are the most underrated for the Warriors. I think you and Aiken does his job. I think he does pretty well. But I think most people are aware of you and Aiken, uh, which defeats the purpose of being uh, underrated. Ah, oh, no, well, too fair. No, yeah, but no, I, I would say, for the, maybe, you could say you and Aiken uh, will be a shout out. Did I read to their team? Oh, that's right. I didn't go into the Tigers game because the Tigers annoy me. And I'm a Tigers fan. I'd say for the Warriors, you'd be looking towards. Uh, who would you go? Yeah, probably you and Aiken. Josh Curran's rated now, so you can't even say he's... Uh, I guess Uthu Gamani, maybe, yeah. But, but he's quite rated because he's the only good player in that team half the time. Uh, by the way, I hate to say I told, so, told you so about Oliver Gilda. Uh, I've already read that comment out. Are uh, the two what related? Are the two Kings related? I'm not sure. Max King, Josh King. I'm not too sure. I just saw that. And I thought that. I thought that. Uh, Fred says, what, what do you mean it's always going back to the Broncos? It's about Hunt. You play with Brisbane when that tragic moment happens. It's not about the Broncos, it's about Hunt and Milford to say. Well, no. So the question was about, you know, Ben Hunt being underrated. And I said, because of that knock-on. But we're not really talking about the Broncos, you know. And I know the knock-on happened at the Broncos. But we're not actually talking about the Broncos. And that's why I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Not always about the bonkos, not always about the schmonkos. Malcolm says, he didn't bother answering mine, or is that bad? Top five. Like, I would have answered your comment if maybe you said top ten. But top five, you are something else. You are some Warriors top five. You think the Warriors are going to be top five? You are a goose. I know you're a good blood, but you're also a goose. Uh, Forever Say supporter says, what do you think about Sloan signing at fullback instead of Ramsey? Um, <laughs> Malcolm just got slapped. Uh, Sloan signing at fullback instead of Ramsey. I don't know, Ramsey's not really done much, has he? Uh, maybe, you know, try it out. But Because this is a tryout season for the Dragons. You know, they're going to see what they can do. Mix it, move it and groove it, baby. You know, move it and groove it. Uh, Jared Troy says, Eels fans are a special bunch. They are something else, mate. They are something else. Uh, Marcel Bush says, do you think that Ben Hunt... Ben Hunt should be playing nine and M by play seven. I think Ben Hunt probably should play the nine. Uh, I'm not sure Ben Hunt. I think that he uh, this is probably not the right sport for him. But Ben Hunt, you know, I, I think that honestly, Ben Ben Hunt will never get a game for the Dragons ever again, ever. I don't think he'll ever play. But Ben Hunt, yeah, I think he should play nine. But M by is not great, so no, I don't want M by is the seven there. So no, no. Ryan Zagos says, I wouldn't call... I'd, I'd say Empire's a good number 14, uh, but no, it's the seventh. No, to a spiral position there. Ryan Zagos says, I would call Moses Sook because the tackle from Sharks injured Moses. No, I would. Uh, Moses' knee and Ramian went down on the hurt knee, but a bit of an overreaction. I'm not saying he's a Sook, or anyone's not saying he's a Sook because one game. They're saying he's a Sook because he does this quite frequently. Um, and then and then the surprise when people complain that he tried to take the kick about 14 minutes after, you know, the penalty against the Tigers. Tessa Lewis says, hi. Hello. Yes, it does. I mean, that Jay says, I used to like most early in his career, but now he's nothing but a drama queen, the fair drink of diva. Mate, last year he pulled the Eels along in those finals, and he pulled the Eels along towards the end of that year, so I would disagree. I would disagree. But he's a diva. He absolutely is a uh, is a diva. Does make sense, Matt Lodge the Warriors. Matt Lodge is an absolute dog. Uh, we're going to go here for maybe another 10 or so more minutes, guys. So let's hit that thumbs up button, subscribe when you're out here, get your last comments in, get your last bit chat messages through. Uh, we'll probably go for another 10 minutes and then we're going to jump off and we're going to grab something to eat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Bronx Nation fans, get a decent coach the Warriors and they can be anything, especially when they can finally go home. Uh, yeah, but, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> the Warriors have been... 
the, the Warriors never change, man. Like, they don't ever change. And I don't think that them going back home, I should expect them to then become this ultimate world beater team that we, we know the Warriors have the ability to because they've just got so much troubles with rubber union in that country. Unfortunately, rubber union steals with a good player. It's my boy, Tesoro Tahurirangi. He he got stolen, you know. A lot of the all black boys got stolen from rugby league. So it is unfortunate that New Zealand and the Aussies want to stay in Australia. This is why everyone was, when they say about PNG and they say, oh, if Papua New Guinea come in, they're not going to be good because there's going to be no Australian players going to want to play for them. The literal point of bringing Papua New Guinea in is that Papua New Guinea players play and it improves their country and it improves their team through the way that they're playing as individuals with their country. Look at Argentine Jaguares. Everyone would have been like, oh, but the Argentine Jaguares, they're not going to get all, any of the New Zealand players, the Australian players, the South African players. They didn't want them. They wanted to build through that country. And that's why their national team rose and made a lot better. So um, this is the thing. New Zealand, that's why they stick with New Zealand players. PNG will stick with Papua New Guinea players. People from Western Australia, the, the Western Australia team, I guarantee you that people who are from the East Coast, rugby league players from the East Coast, probably won't go out there unless they get a massive contract. Because Western Australia is basically another country. And Jay Hayes knows it. Jay Hayes, he bloody damn well knows it. He's from Western Australia, mate. So, yeah, when you're bringing in teams like that, you're not thinking about the Australians going there. You're thinking about the locals playing for them. Um, but you might get a couple of randos going out to Western Australia and whatnot, but you're not going to get a great deal of East Coasters because East Coast and Western Australia and, and the West Coast is, is superbly different, man. It's superbly different. It's a completely different world out there. It's basically Beijing out there. The closest to Beijing they are to the Gold Coast. Sharp Shoe says, do you think Campbell will feel out enough to be a top fullback? I hope so, man. I really do. I hope so. Ryan's over to stop the hate from Moses. I wasn't hating on him, but he can go and screw himself. I don't know why I said that, but I'm just going to do it because I can. Sam says, who do you think is going to... I don't actually mind, Sam Moses. Um, who do you think is going to win a grand final in the NLW? Uh, I may as well say the Titans because it's not a crazy... Uh, it's not an outlandish prediction, uh, but I don't think it's going to happen, but it's not an outlandish prediction. If anything, it's going to be Broncos, but if I'm going to take a sneaky, I would say the Titans have a good chance. Uh, we just beat the Broncos. So, uh, Fred Mercedes supporter says, Ben Hunt looks uh, like that everyday guy that forgets he has an NRL game. Gee whiz, you guys really hate Ben Hunt, eh? Uh, Blaise Sarr says, Broncos win by eight, the Titans win by 14. I like that comment. Just without the Broncos part, but the Titans part, whoa, beautiful. That is that is something beautiful. That is really something beautiful. Uh, G Land says, Sharks will win the Copa in the next three years. That's cool because the Titans win 2023, so you can win maybe in 2024 or 25. That's fine. That's fine, but the, the Titans win the cop next year. So. Uh, Nate Jason, speaking of Moses, do you know how long N buyers contracts to the Dragons for? Absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea. Uh, Lockham Hamm says, when the Warriors going back home? I think halfway through the year, if all things go planned, if everything works out well, hopefully it goes out well, but there's no guarantees. Uh, but I really, really do hope that um, everything goes to plan and uh, you know they get home and I'll go to the first game. I will go to New Zealand and it will be the first game that they get. I don't care that I'm taking a ticket away from a local because I want to be part of that atmosphere. I'm going to be part of that atmosphere. I will go to that first home game and they will win. I think it's against the Tigers or Bulldogs. I think it was against the Bulldogs. Who they, we found this out on the weekend. We found this out on the weekend. We got the Warriors schedule. We, I think it was the Bulldogs or the Tigers or something like that. The Bulldogs or the Tigers who's their, their first home games against. Uh, Morton Day, Points Bet, Suncorp, Jubilee, Morton Daly. It is against the Tigers. <laughs> oh, dear me. Dear me. The Tigers are going to have a hundred put past them. The Dogs get to play the Northland this year too. And the, obviously the Titans have to play the Warriors in the last round of the season in New Zealand. I actually might have going to just go to that. Might have just go to that. But I want to be at that Titans-Tigers game. No, sorry, not Titans-Tigers game. I'll be there next week, the Titans-Tigers, and see us. Uh, on Thursday night, but to Warriors Tigers, oh, I'm so t- I'm terrified for him, man. I'm terrified for him. That's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be terrible. Jay Hayes says, "Well, you should talk about the great country, WA." Exactly right. A country, because your own country out there. You're basically Timbuktu. You see Timbuktu? That's over there. So over here, you got Perth, and then about a kilometer away over there is Timbuktu, and then about two kilometers away down that side, you got bloody the end of the earth. You don't want to go there because if you go over the end of the earth, you're gone. You're gone, straight. You don't want to do that. Timbuktu, end of the earth. And just out to the west is Whoop. That's where Perth is. It's right in the middle of Whoop, Whoop, Timbuktu, and the end of the earth. Uh, Captain James says, does WA even have any league comps? Yeah, yeah. They they have a they used to be a league team. They used to as the Perth 
Reds, I think it might have been. Uh, hold on one second here. Perth used to be in the competition. Perth Reds. NRL, maybe? I don't know. Let's go. What is it? Uh, WA Reds? What's it? Western Reds. The WA Reds, yeah. We're a rugby league football club based in Perth, founded in 1992. Uh, they played from 95 to 97. Did they play 95 and 97? No, Australian Rugby League competition, 95 and 96, and then they were in Super League, and then, ah, they were unfortunately one of those Super League crunches. They got crunched by the Super League. Yeah. Um, I don't think they were that bad. I don't think they, I think they had finances and whatnot. I think it was actually just part of the Super League that screwed them over completely. Uh, but I couldn't, I'm not, I couldn't be, I was not too sure. Uh, no chance to bring back the cash converter sponsored by some reds. There we go. See, there he is. He knows. Ah, see, he knows. He knows. Uh, YouTube Brooks New Zealand has man Brisbane doing better this year or uh, they are doing better this year but you've played two games relax you played two games against a deplorable Rabbitohs team and I'm a deplorable Rabbitohs team and a Bulldogs team that is improving but you both made a lot of mistakes in that game and the Bulldogs if they had a better doing than Jaden Ogdenbaugh probably would have won that game but in the same sense the Broncos still won cool they won 2-0 and they've got a really soft schedule for the first four rounds so they better hope that they have a good record. They better hope they're at least three from four because they're probably going to lose those straight two games right after the Panthers and the Roosters. Then they play Dogs again, and then they get graced by the Titans and the Rabbitohs, I think it is, but they could fix themselves by then. But at this time, Rabbitohs and Broncos could be anything. Anything. Because obviously, Broncos would beat them once. Uh, there's a Western Australia learn something new every day. There is, yeah. There is a Western part of Australia. Yeah, yeah, that's just out part of Man Isa area. You know, oh, no, you, you can get Northern Territory just there in South Australia, and then, you know, that's the that's the foreign land over there. Like, there's a big line between South Australia and, uh, and Northern Territory. I've, you never cross that. You know, they say, they say, don't cross that line. It's a dangerous line over there, dangerous. So, you know, that's like in the Lion King where they've got the dark side. It's the dark side over there. Ooh. Scary. When you get to that last South Australia and all the territory, usually um, you're going to see the planes go, whoa, get away from that area. Dude, man, it's dangerous. So. Zambai says, Adaz is a South Australia too. I am talking about South Australia. We've got five more minutes here, guys. Like I said, thumbs up, subscribe. Let's get to 15.4K tonight. Let's get it. Let's get a couple more subscribers. Let's do it. Uh, Nate J says, uh, Warriors go home next sheep breeding seat. Okay. Jeez. 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 Forever Saints the boy says, do you know that we actually have more sheep per capita, I believe, than New Zealand? It's funny, but we just don't, you know, um, sleep with them. Forever Saints boy says, watching pets play the Eagles and the Cowboy. Cowboys destroy the Rays, maybe forget about the storm. Why? The storm are 2-0. and Why are you forgetting about the storm? They, they're 2-0 and right now. You know, I don't, you don't want to be forgetting about them. What's going on there? I'm going to answer five more comments. So Fabio said this isn't included because it's not a question. Uh, Fabio says, my tips are Sharks, Warriors, Roosters, Panthers, Storm, Titans. That's all I made that out for. I literally just read it out because I just wanted to read it at the Titans. That's exactly right. All right, five more. Four more now because Fraser Love says, Peyton to be sacked after round five. Uh, no, I think that Raiders game saved the life out of him. I think the Raiders game saved the life out of him. Actually, what is the schedule for the Cows coming up here? Let's have a look here at the Cowboys. The old Cowboys. So Bronx, Roosters, Warriors, Raiders, Titans, Eels. So let's realistically have a look at this. They're one on one right now. This game is a 50-50 this week. If you want to know my tips for Broncos Cowboys, you have to be a $5 member. Pin comment. You know, it supports the channel. Get around it. It's only for us. Five bucks a month. You know, go buy a cup of coffee. Man. Come on. Come on. Man. The Broncos Cowboys. Uh, that's going to be a good game. Then the Cowboys through. So let's, let's, I'll, I'm going to give the home team the benefit of the doubt there in this. No, you know what? We're going to give this to the Cowboys. We're going to give this to the Cowboys for the sake of this discussion here. So we're going to assume the Cowboys win this one. They, they do well for the Rays game. They, they keep grooving. They keep moving grooving. So they're two and one now. They're going to be 2-2 two two because the Roosters will beat them. The Warriors and Cowboys at Redcliffe, I'm probably actually going to take the Warriors there. But that's a 50-50, you know? So we can go 3-2 to the Cowboys, you know? Then they play the Raiders. So 50-50, but they hate travelling to New South Wales. They actually hate travelling overall. The Cowboys have never been a good travelling team, so I'm actually going to say 3-3. Three three. Uh, they're going to play the Titans. The Titans have absolutely walloped them every single time they've played them recently, so I'm going to say 3-4. And then the Eels, I'm going to say 3-5. So, you know... That I gave them a couple of games, and they're still three and five. They're still three and five after a couple of games that I gave them, and that's my biggest worry there for the uh, for the Cowboys is that they've got a tough schedule, but it's not a crazy difficult schedule. Like it's not an unwinnable schedule, but they're not going to be the Roosters. I can't see them beating the Titans, and I can't see them beating the Eels. I can see them beating the Rays, I can see them beating the Warriors, and I can see them beating the Broncos. Uh, but they need to really lap it up on that, otherwise they will get a bottom two, bottom four kind of um, situation. 
Uh, all right, so we've got four more here. We've got four more. Blake Gittin says, sat behind your Titans versus Warriors. Love and passion. Appreciate it, dude. We're there every single game, man. Every single game. So we'll be back there next Thursday night. I'll be in Canberra this week for the Titans Raiders game. The vlog will come out on Monday. Uh, it's going to be a good game, man. That's going to be a, uh, it's gonna be a good game, you fella. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for the Titans to win that. Uh, four more questions here. Fraser Lums' best game so far this season. Um, it's been some doozies, man. There has been some doozies. Titans Eels was a doozy. Um, people forget that because of how good this round was. Rabbit Storm was shit for 70 minutes, uh, then got good. Broncos Bulldogs was super fun. I'm actually dead set going to probably say Bronx Dogs. It's a tie between Bronx Dogs and Eels Titans for me. It's a tie between Bronx Dog and Eels Titans because Eels Titans was the game of the round in round one. It just had to be. Every game, a lot of games were close, but Eels Titans was the game of the round because it had controversy. It had, um, you know, good defense at times. It had unbelievable attack. It also had terrible defense. And it was, it had everything, right? So I'd say Eels Titans, and I'd say it's literally on par with that Bronx Dogs, but for the different reasons, because the Bronx Dogs made a lot of mistakes. You know, I'll, leave with, I'll actually leave with Eels Titans, to be fair. I'll leave with Eels Titans, um, but I'm happy for anyone to, to say otherwise, because there's other heap of games. There's a heap of games right now. Um, guys, if you ever see a fake gold man, mate, or gold man, mate, just hide that that account from the channel, mate. Um, just hide that account from the channel. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, NG Elite. NG Elite says, the Cowboys finals bound. <laughs> you muppet. You are a muppet, NG. You are a muppet. <laughs> Oh, dear me, you Cowboys fans or something. Hey? Jasmine says, can't wait for the Ockham, so the Ockham board getting drop party when Alan comes back. But Alan's not that great either. Then you're going to want to have an Alan drop party for Ockham board to come back in. Uh, four more questions here. Uh, here we go. Kirby John says, did you see three questions left? Did you see Fletcher and Heine grilling the South Wales with Dolphins jerseys on? Uh, no, I haven't, don't even know what that's about. But what do you mean? Um, not, even too, not even too short, to be fair. Uh, Broncos and Dogs, it was insane with its intensity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. That was a huge game, to be fair. Uh, Titans 28, Raiders 6. I like that. I'd love to see that, Broncos fan Sam. I love that, Broncos Sam. Yeah, that's a great, buddy. Uh, that's a great comment, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Ryan Zagros says Raiders versus Sharks round one. Unfortunate thing with that was that I was at the Broncos versus Rabbitohs game, so I didn't actually get to see that full game. So I know it was a good game. But actually, let's go remind ourselves of round one because you do quickly forget about it. Because it's been, there's been so many games, good games this year, you do quickly forget about it. Uh, yeah, Raiders, there's a Sharks, there's decent. Uh, Titans, Eels. Actually, the Borders Cowboys were shit out. I still say Eels, Titans is better than Sharks and, and Raiders, though. I would. I would, I would, I would. And that Bulldogs Cowboys game was shocking. That was shocking. Uh, Storm Rabbitohs was decent. Panthers Dragons was decent, but it still had that missing oof from it. Uh, Titans Warriors was close, but it was I don't I can't remember that game because it's so hot. Uh, Sharks Eels was fantastic to watch. To be fair, uh, Cowboys Raiders no that was that was diabolical. Uh, <laughs> Tigers that makes me sick. And then Broncos Dogs was fun to watch. Yeah. Um, all right, three more. Jimmy Bill so, so two more now. Cowboys going to the finals to watch two other teams play. <laughs> that is an unbelievable comment from you, Jimmy. If I could pick your comment, I would. But we do have a five dollar membership there, so I'm not going to change that. But uh, that's an unbelievable comment. That is an unbelievable comment. But uh, all right, so two more questions here. Get your questions in, thinking fast here, guys. While we do, while we wait for this, hit that thumbs up button, then subscribe if you have no idea. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll go two more questions here. The Cowboys going to finals. I already said on my stream on the weekend, I said, if, we, if the Cowboys are going to finals, then I'm moving to Guadalajara and I'm becoming a Mexican cartel dealer. I'm becoming a Mexican cartel, a cartel dealer and I am moving to Guadalajara in Mexico. The Cowboys are not making the top eight. They're not doing it. If I could do a, a ladder predictor right now, I would do it just to show you. They're not going to get even anywhere close. Not even close. Um, so not many, not many questions coming through right now. Let's say, yeah, not many questions coming through. So we're probably just going to jump off instead, to be fair. Um, we've gone for an hour and a half anyway overall. So uh, we've gone through pretty much everything. I don't think you can even ask me too much more, to be fair, because we've gone through pretty much everything. Uh, obviously, actually, let's go through quickly what the... Um, Let's go through quickly what the upcoming schedule is for this week. Uh, and I'll tell you what streams I'll be doing. So on Thursday night, uh, we've got Dragons versus the Sharkies. Dragon Sharkies. Um, that's the same time as the Australia versus Japan World Cup qualify, though. So do... Yeah, it's going to be tough for me to stream that one. Uh, Jay, there's so much Cowboys hate. It's because you're not good, Jay. It's because you're not good. The Raiders 
with that bad, that bad, that bad. So I don't know. You'll have to figure. You'll have to follow me on uh, Baycast for Instagram. Actually, I put this up here on the screen. You have to follow me on Baycast for Instagram uh, to know if I'm going to be doing the Dragons versus Sharks game on Thursday or the Australia versus Wallabies, uh, Australia versus Japan game. Sorry, uh, on Friday we've got the Tigers and the Warriors. Interesting game. That tough game to predict. To be fair, because the Warriors have not beaten Tigers at Campbelltown since 2007, mind you. So I just want to throw that one out there. Uh, Roosters, Rabbitohs. We'll be streaming both those Friday night games, by the way. We'll stream both those Friday night games. And then on Saturday, I won't be streaming because I'll be at the Titans-Raiders game. So unfortunately, I missed the panthers Knights game and the Storm-Eels. Oh, man, if you want to miss that. But I'll be at the Raiders-Titans game. That vlog will come out on Monday. Uh, and then on Sunday, I'll be flying back early in the morning up to the up to Gold Coast because I'm going to get home so I can stream Timmy Chu versus Timmy Sue versus Goucher. Uh, plus also Broncos versus Cowboys and also Melee versus Dogs. So big weekend upcoming here, guys. Like I said, let's hit that thumbs up button. Let's subscribe if you're new out here. Do we have any uh, last ditch questions here? Last ditch questions. Got, we've got go to the Roosters here from Jared Troy. Um, Senpai says, it's not really hate, just an assessment. I don't hate the cows. I don't have, I have no problem with the cows at all. No problem with the cowboys at all. No, Jay says, look, look, thanks to Strand Blazer. Look forward to you becoming the world's first Fijian cartel leader dealing drugs in Mexico. Well, shit, man. If the Cowboys uh, make the A, it's going to be the way. That's just going to be. Um, that's just going to be the way. We're going to have to do it, man. I promise you. I promise you. We'll go to Guadalajara. We're doing Guadalajara. Honestly, you nearly want the Cowboys to make the A because one, the Cowboys and the Big House for NRL sweepstakes. I got the Cowboys. I want them to win this year. I want them to win this year, but they're not going to, right? But if the Cowboys make the top eight, I'm getting a trip to Guadalajara because I'm actually going to fly there for a vlog just because I've said this. Just because I've said this. So I'm in a win-win situation here. Because I'm, I'm flying to Mexico for at least a vlog as a bit of a joke. And I'll fly to Guadalajara for a bit of a joke just because of it. So I'm in a win-win here, baby. <laughs> I'm in a win-win. But uh, what is this shit that I just clicked on? Chuck Dunno says, Jay, jump on the Tigers train, mate. Can't go wrong. Oh, I could say a lot about <laughs> trains being tired. I don't know. Oh, how about that? <laughs> uh, oh, this one. Okay, this is the last question here. Because what's the game of the round? Well, it's still been game of the round. Uh, no, so I said that the Eels versus the Sharks was going to be the game of the round last week, not the uh, not all the other games, and I'm pretty certain I was right there. So usually you look away from the good, the big games and you see what's going to be the best games. Um, and I am probably going to say the best game is going to be... I could easily see it being at the, that Reese's Rabbits, but uh, Dra Sharks-Dragons could be a doozy too. Uh, Panthers are going to put a score to the Knights. You know what? It would be funny to see if Bulldogs can make a game of it with Manly. If the Bulldogs can make a game with it with Manly, that would be super exciting. I'll be streaming those games. That would be really exciting to see. If the Bulldogs make this close, that's going to be the game of the round. Um, because people would just be like, what the shit is wrong with Manly? But if I'm going to go with something a little bit... Uh, I'm going to go... You know what? Rabbitohs Roosters games haven't been great in recent years. I'm going to say Rabbitohs Roosters. I'm going to say about Bruce. I'm going to look away from the main game that everyone's looking at in that Stormy game. And I'm going to go and say the. Uh, oh, are we frozen here? Yeah. We're frozen. I'm not. No, we're not frozen now. We're back here. Um, I'm going to look at that Rabbit's Bruce, which seems like it's obvious, but most people are looking at Dragon Sharks and most people are looking at Stormy Hills. But anyway, guys, I'm going to jump off for now. Obviously, we're going to click through these here. Uh, follow us on Instagram here at Big House Sport. Obviously, that's where we're posting Instagram stories all the time. Plus, we're posting our photos. Getty images have me on their photos. But Getty, look at me go. Um, and also, yeah, we've got, we put photos up there every single day. So uh, definitely get around over there. Um, and then also follow us on Facebook at Big House Sport. Get around it. That's where we drop our videos and whatnot. But I'm going to jump off for now. I appreciate you guys as always. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow for a future tour review. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See you.